What's up, everybody? Uh, it's been a while since I've been behind the mic. Uh, it's rare that I take a whole month off of not recording. I uh, was very eager to get home and start recording from the Latin America trip. Uh, currently waiting for JQ and Robert to coordinate. Robert's ready, but as usual, JQ isn't. This is typical of our trip. So why am I not surprised today? <clears throat> but uh, with that said, I, I got a few things to talk about. We got the Florida Carpet Championships to look at. Uh, we got some RC news and stuff like that. So with that said, I'm just going to drop that intro as soon as I find it. And we will get busy with what we have to talk about. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this money-grabbing book racing. It's hard it's not to be it. arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Lefty the Great, with co-host and guest as they get together <laughs> to chat our scene. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Here we go. 100 bucks right here. $100 throw. Oh, no! <laughs> I like this one. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, Nitro is the glory, but e-buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? This is episode number 216, and I'm your host, Keenan White, a.k.a. Lefty the Great. And uh, yeah, wow. It feels like new, honestly. I, I once again forgot my intro that I've said 216 times now, so I managed to mess that up somehow. But yes, everybody, we are back. Uh, it's been a long four weeks of travel. Uh, got back. Uh, the other day uh, we'll talk about that uh, we're gonna say some thank yous and all that stuff we will have robert and jq on later we're gonna talk to robert about his recent change to marco we're gonna go over our latin america tour and of course we're waiting for jq to show up but in the meantime i have to talk about some stuff mainly i'll talk about this race <clears throat> i have some shout outs and stuff like that so uh let's get going with that and that said i would like to say thank you to all of the people the nnrc squad around the world uh this Latin America tour and this year period wouldn't have been possible without you guys. I haven't broke down how many flights I've been on and how many miles I've traveled, but it's been a lot. And uh, this culminated with this four week journey, about well, three weeks in South America and one week in Florida. I say four weeks, but three weeks with Robert and JQ, uh, but couldn't do it without you guys. And of course, also uh, just from, from around the world. So thank you for all the support. We appreciate it. And we look forward to 2023. A big shout out to the patrons of the NNRC. And of course, the YouTube members. The YouTube members is something new. Uh, if you wish to be a patron of the podcast, you can support us on Patreon. If the link is in the written description or the YouTube member. The YouTube member is uh, $1.99. So uh, i like to see that grow. That will help me out a lot, to be honest. Um, a lot of money spent on traveling this year, thanks to the companies that helped us get there. Uh, and thank you to the supporters of the podcast. Uh, also, thank you to these awesome companies for their support this year. Uh, they are Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, TNR Fuels. Happy birthday, Chris. So it was your birthday the other day. Uh, Mayako, RCGP, Beach RC, Techno RC, Sampadao Racing Batteries, TZO 200 Tires, Lugs Racing Tires, G-Spec RC Tuning, Clinic RC, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic, Racecraft USA. Shout out to the NNRC drivers, I guess I want to call them. They are David Runnefolk, Robert Battier, Jarrett Tebow, Alexander Hagberg. You can also check out their respective, respective shops. Uh, all links for these companies are in the written description of this podcast. 
There are also some coupon codes and affiliate links that you can use. Uh, that really helps us out a lot, and we greatly appreciate it if you do use those. So thank you. Uh, real quick, I'm going to shout out to some things that I saw happen uh, while I was away. A fall brawl actually happened. I, I think it was this first weekend I was away, I, I believe so. Uh, David Olson, congratulations. This is a young man that's been working hard. Uh, he recently made the switch over to S-Works from Techno. Uh, mentioned his name a few times, him, Joey Bardon, Trent Walker, a couple other young guys are all uh, doing right, well, doing pretty well down there in the Southeast. Uh, he came second to Co Ogden and Nitro Buggy, and I believe in E Buggy. I know they're working very hard. So that's good to see. Also, Lucas Lauren, man, he knocked it out of the park. They had a, he'd made a full brawl documentary and he had some focus on David. So that's why I probably know about it. Also, I saw his race reports, but. Man, I have to say that Lucas's editing and his imagination when it comes to creating content is awesome. I like him. I like what he's doing. The documentary was great. It was narrated by him. I must not recognize him at first. So good job, Lucas, and good job to Beach RC and all those guys for all their hard work. Brent's Wheel and Trigger podcast, Brent Dantrit, owner of Beach RC. So he's doing it like I would love to do it. He brings flies people in to do it and um they party i guess and they go talk about rc and other things uh he's had fend he's had mika widmeyer he had another guy i don't really know who he is and i think that yeah dudes go in there to hang out and do a pod with him as well so check that out give it a like and a subscribe another channel i wanted to shout out to was uh roach rc another great youtube channel um i met him at the masters of dirt and I really like his content. He narrates over different things and he, he looks at different things in RC and gives great explanations. So check him out and he's doing a great job. Also shout out to my boy, Toby Hansen. Keep your head up, man. Uh, I know you've been in a battle for the last year uh, and I hope you get some of the answers you need her soon. But I was talking to him the other day and I just want you to keep your head up, dude. Also, congratulations to Clayton Young, and thank you for everyone that voted. Uh, Clayton Young is your new Roar president. Happy to see this. I was very worried, very worried that uh, he was going to get kind of screwed out of this, but I think I made a post on the 5th, and like we hadn't heard any results, and I talked to Clayton, and he is a bit uh, disappointed that they hadn't gotten the results, and I kind of felt that he felt that it was going to happen. And then again, I made a post on the 8th of December asking about the results. And finally, we were, we received the results and he won by a landslide. Uh, I think like by, it was like 125 votes for him. And I can't remember how much for the next guy. So congratulations to him. Thank you to everybody that signed up and voted for him. And I think uh, we should get behind Clayton. He wants to do a lot of things differently. So I would say first sign up for Roar. Uh, he's going to have digital membership cards so that's great and um yeah please check it out and uh let's go clayton let's go uh let's start this is where change starts for roar we've asked for it now we have it uh and we can move hopefully we can move forward and do great things that's the goal i would say so um yeah let's do this uh thank you for everybody, I mean, I was really stoked. I met him at, I met Clayton at the Florida Carpet Championships. I'll talk about that more in a bit. And um, yeah, so very good stuff to see. And um, happy about that. Very happy about that. Let's, let's, let's make Raw awesome. Uh, oh, Race Stars Contest 22 is happening in Poland. It starts today. I think the track's opening up. This is uh, my buddy Powell. He also is the artist that does this great. 3D drawn tracks. Uh, I posted one a you know, uh, few weeks ago. Met him at uh, Redavon as well. Very energetic. Like, makes a lot of content uh, for the Polish RC community. This is his race. It's back this year. It's a copper race in an arena. And he's got quite a few. Uh, he's obviously got <clears throat> the kid Bartek, who's really fast. And of course, the Polish Punisher. Mikhail will be there, but he has some some medium fast guys going on there, like the Johan, the can't remember his name, but I believe oh, 
I was just looking at him, but I met him at at the world as well. He got like a few fast guys. Elias Johansson's going on to race there. He's from Sweden. And they got they got some it's gonna be good. This is a, a race I I hope they have coverage. But this is one of those races that I think I would like to see maybe the Americans go over and maybe some bigger names go support. So uh, let's see how the coverage is. The track layout looks great, man. This guy does some great pictures and stuff like that. So check it out on Race Stars Poland. Uh, if they have any coverage, I'll post it up on the NNRC Facebook. Also, uh, we have a few condolences to go out to. So uh, first off, condolences to Rohan Grant, the owner of Barnstormers, uh, uh, stalwart on the RC community there in the Northeast. He lost his daughter a few weeks ago, so our apologies. Uh, our condolences go out to him. There's a benefit race for her at Barnstormers this weekend, this Sunday, so uh, go check it out if you're in the area. And uh, our condolences to Rohan and his family and all of the Northeast racers. Also found out this morning when I woke up, uh, Condolences to the New Mexico RC community. David Gallardo, he passed away last night, I believe. Uh, I met him in 2018 at SCRC. Water Wars, very nice man. Loved RC, loved short course truck, and um, I loved TLR. I was just recently watching, looking at some of his posts where he got a, just got a box from TLR, and he was all excited about it, and um yeah, unfortunate for him and his family. Very nice gentleman. Loved RC. And uh, our condolences go out to New Mexico. Uh, he was well known throughout New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Colorado, because he did a lot of those border war races and traveling in that circle of RC. So our condolences go out to him. I ah, woke up and saw that and was a little bit sad about that this morning. Nice man. You know, when you see people that you know in your past and just maybe had a few words with them, but you see they passed away, it's still... Still a bit sad, so unfortunate to see that. All right, guys, so um, it's the end of the year. I know uh, we missed a a bunch of time here on this traveling to the Latin America trap. Well, I had the Florida carpet race, then I went to the right. I, I came home for a day, and I held all intents to make a <clears throat> recap of the Florida race, but... <laughs> As luck would have it, my lock on my door, I was acting up and I went to unlock it and I broke my key in the lock and there was no way to get it out. I had very little time and that day that I had. I got home like maybe 2 a.m. I was up that next morning. I had to get clothes washed and get ready to go to Peru. So very busy. And unfortunately, I didn't get to record this recap. And... A lot of people might have said, well, you could have recorded while you was on the road. And I had my stuff, not all this stuff, and I have a portable setup. And I would have loved to, but to be honest, we was kind of busy from the time we left our lodgings till we got home late nights. I don't think I got into bed uh, prior to 12 many nights or at least 11 Maybe one night I got to bed around 10, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast with these type of trips. It was RC every day, and then it was out to dinner every night with different people, which was great. But I'll talk more about that in the wrap-up with Robert and JQ later on. But it was a great time. It was good. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit of RC news and stuff before I go on any further. Not real news, but this is kind of in, an informal no ads podcast this week. This is just talking. Uh, but in the RC news, I see that uh, one of the big moves, I think, is Cole Ogden leaving Hot Race. And uh, a lot of noise was made because of his reason for leaving was that he didn't appreciate uh, his competitors being able to have the tires at the Worlds. And at first, I was a little complexed by this. I mean, what did you want? your tire brand to win, but then I can see that giving it to your competition gives them an edge. Uh, but that's just kind of the name of the game in RC. Uh, I, I don't, you hear a lot of rumors about Cole was running J concepts tires or whatnot. Um, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, we all know kind of know that the J concept tires are kind of dominant at those indoor race time play tracks, which are big. 
uh, AMS was the last one. And I don't know uh, if that's true or that's the reason or whatever, but he's out at Hot Race. And I think I know where he's going, but I can't really confirm that. But it's uh, it's not one of the bigger names. It's one of the lower lower names, but been made quite a splash in RC, if my sources are correct. Uh, I'm not saying that who they are. So we'll look forward to seeing what happens with Co Ogden. Jared Wiggins out at AKA. Not really surprised at this. I think a lot of, I don't know what's, a lot of people are saying that Proline is gonna, is using pro compounds from AKA and whatnot, but it sounds like AKA is having the same issue that they had before, which is just not having product available, not having a sustain, not having enough product to give away to these guys. On top of that, not really, you know, they're still on the same compounds. I don't think they've really done anything to, to compete with the bigger tire companies like, uh, J- well, they were a bigger, they are still, a, but you know, J Concepts, Hot Race, and stuff like that. So I heard there's more people to come, big names to leave as well uh, from AKA, and uh, we'll see about that in the future, what's going to happen. So, yes, that type of surprise is going on. Oh, obviously, the Mayfield to Techno. Sorry, I forgot. Maybe I mentioned that on the last podcast, but Mayfield to Techno, no surprise there. We knew that was going to happen. And, um, yeah, he went to the U.S. Open, I believe, and he uh, caught ass there. Actually, he didn't beat – I don't think he beat uh, Rifkin and E-Buggy. But um, the U.S. Open happened – you know, still like the people that had a great time that I talked to. So uh that's good to see. And um yeah, he kicked ass with his truggy and his nitro buggy. I can't wait to see what that DNC. I'm sure he's going to also go to I'm sure he's also gonna go to SIC here shortly. I would assume he'll be there. That's happening in the first kickoff race for these guys. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, SIC is going to be competitive. Uh, there are some more moves in the works. I can't really talk about it. I know I said that Tiba is out at Techno. I still believe that. So uh, that's. I think that's just waiting to play out as well. And um, we have to see where he goes after that. So Silly Season is not over. I plan on doing a whole Silly Season video, basically going over these moves. So... I think that's off the top of my head that I can remember. There may be some other moves. I didn't, I ain't really capturing right now, but just being on the road was kind of, I, I, you know, was hectic, it was hectic. So I didn't get to see as much. <clears throat> In other news, something cool has happened. Uh, Nemo released this video and released shots of the Agama N1 production kit, which I think is shipping soon. Here's the video. It's pretty cool for those who can. It's uh, off Facebook for those who can. Heard the volume. It's uh, actually looks a pretty badass video. <laughs> Rendering of the kit being stripped apart. And uh, it looks pretty badass. And I believe these cars are shipping out to people. So everybody's excited about them. Again, I'll mute it. So, really exciting to see this. Happy for John Hazelwood, Mark Rumble, Billy Tylaska, and those guys. They worked really hard on this. And uh, it's good to see it coming into fruition. I'm eager to see it on these uh, more American style tracks and how it works out, more in the hands of the regular drivers. And, um, yeah, it should be interesting to see how it all works out for this this car. It's very innovative. It's nothing we've seen in a long time. We've seen similar things, but not exactly like this. So I'm very interested to see how it works. And um, I really need to get Rumble and uh, and Hazelwood on this podcast at some time. So uh, can't wait to see these N1s in the hands of regular people and I mean me Martin makes it look can make anything look fast so and uh, his car look good like the times I've seen it but I really want to see it on these rough like a DNC stop track so it's going to be interesting and congratulations to those guys man they thinking outside the box and going through with it with all the criticism and everything else so good job 
Sorry, just drinking my vitamin C water. Um, I think that's it for news. If I missed anything, I apologize. But uh, I've been rambling on now. Now it's time to talk about this race. So the Florida Carpet Championships that I attended uh, the first week of November, I believe it was. So this was an impromptu race. I mean, I did talk to Danny Chavez and TJ Bradley at the Worlds about this race. And there was some... Uh, some talk about me coming to this race, but uh, that kind of after I came back from the worlds, we kind of didn't have any. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? We didn't have uh, any contact about it. But then I think at the Masters of Dirt, I was working with Danny Chav, uh, Danny Chavez, Danny Paz of WRCE. And then Danny Chavez contacted me and said, hey, dude, uh, we want you to be at the <clears throat> come to our race and do it. Like we, we talked about and work with Danny on the stream and do your thing. So I was like, all right, let, I, let me talk to my wife because it's going to be a quick turnaround. We're talking about in two weeks time, I got to fly. The, I fly home now. Then two weeks time, I got to fly back and then spend a day home and then go out to this. So my wife said, yes, go ahead, do it. It's going to be quick. Uh, so I headed out to Florida Carpet Championships. Danny Paz picked me up in Miami. We drove up to Cocoa Bay <clears throat> in his truck. Uh, we had a hotel not too far from the track. So this race was at Beach Line Raceway. I think it's the fourth year, I want to say, that it's happened. But it's quickly turned into one of the biggest carpet races in the world. It has a very stacked international crowd. I'm hoping that next year maybe we see the likes of Ronald Falk and some of these other top European guys making their way over there and some of the Japanese guys. I like to see Coelho there. But this year it had uh, some stiff European competition. We had the uh, the X-ray camp of Martin Bayer, Max Gotzel, <clears throat> and a few other guys. We had Schumacher with Kobevic, who I finally met, who's like 18 and six foot five. Is like really looks like a Viking, and his dad's taller, so they were there very fast. Mike Orlowski, Trish was there from Schumacher, Brock Champlin, and his brother. So, Brock and his element in this carpet, and um, Dakota Fenn, Rivkin, Mayfield did not make it, Tasman didn't make it, nor did Cavallari. I think uh, Cavallari and Mayfield were sick from SIC. There were a lot of people that were kind of sick from sick from AMS. Sorry, <clears throat> the uh the cold and dust and nitro fumes gets to you in those indoor races. But this was my first copper race. I was happy to be there. Uh, Danny Chavez and TJ understand the value of coverage of this race and the importance of making everything look great. So he was very active in what he wanted from the coverage side. And Danny is really good at what he does as well from WRC. He is a one-stop package. He can, he has the stream going. He can take pictures. His editing's great and he works hard. And it was, it's been a pleasure to work with him the last two races. And I think we make a great team. And add on to that was his uh, cousin, Yamig, who helped out a lot. And then I finally met Riley Filbert. And he was there with us. And he was helping out a lot. And he was doing with me. the He was following me with the cameras and stuff like that. So Riley was there. And then Dalton, who I met, who was helping us out a lot. And, of course, Lance McDonald. So it was great to finally work with Lance. Uh, I've only really spoken to Lance on Facebook and as a race director at races, but to hang out with him after the job and the fun that we had when we went out to eat and the amazing relationship that he has like with Danny <clears throat> and Yamig and the people, the racers of Florida, it's really good. But man, him and Yamig, oh my gosh, it was pure laughs between those two like every day. Um, so it was fun to get to hang out with Lance. He was super funny. He was staying there in his camper. <laughs> And man, when I got there, I just have to say, woof, when I got there and they had everything coordinated, like, I mean, Danny and TJ and everybody at Beachline, they had the track blue and white, like this blue, like this, this Miami Dolphins blue, everything was coordinated to that. I thought that was so bad ass, all the banners, all the, the color scheme of the track, the, all the, they had blue tape going up the sides of the drums. Oh my gosh, I was blown away by this. I was like, oh yeah, these guys get it. And it looks so awesome. 
I'm rocking this shirt. I really like this shirt. I'm so tired of black shirts. My only really non-black RC shirt. And man, I have to say that those guys knocked out of the park. The jumps were done great by their track builder. The people that support this this track is really impressive because it's 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 uh, it belongs to Robbie. Uh, he used to own Superior Hobbies, and he's the running this track. And then it's like a group, a whole just a whole community that helps it keep it going. And this is their big race, and they actually have the twelve scale worlds there uh, next year. And I'm uh, no, sorry, they also have the twelve carpet nets which i might hopefully go back for uh but just an awesome facility awesome race i think fend won two-wheel drive and arlovsky won four-wheel drive but he won the overall and he actually broke down and cried because it was so stressful he had to really climb his way out of there um i believe Hook, hooks won two-wheel drive and maddie g won four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive and i think he won the overall he actually was a little bit savage too. He said, I had to drop down and show some of these stock guys that it's not just, you know, that I'm still like stock king. Got him in some trouble. And I love it. I'm going to have Maddie G on her. It's going to be my 10 scale nine next year. Hopefully. Um, I had a lot of fun at this race, man. I really did. I, I, I would suggest if you are a carpet race, they, oh, they gave away so much stuff. So they gave away uh, prizes to every winner of every indie main. So every indie main person that won, they got like a kit and a servo. That was badass. Like they got Schumacher kits. They got um, associated kits. I think uh, also we walked around and we gave a kid uh, a brand new um, four-wheel drive buggy. We gave away a guy a brand new charger as well. Just random people that we thought probably needed it. And we walked about and did that. It was such a great event. They gave back. They had Taco Tuesday. They had beer. Man, it was good. Um, I, I got to see. Oh, Miko Wittemeyer was there with a, with the young girl Antonia. I think I can't remember my last name, but she was there from Austria. The big S works contingent: uh, Joe, uh, Spencer, but Miko was the fastest S works slider. Carpet is his element. Great race, man. Great race. Um, I got to meet guys like Brandon Foot and his dad because we had dinner every day. Uh, Jürgen from Lot from Lot Margaret Jürgen from LRP. He was a very nice man to talk to. We didn't get to talk to too much, but he is he knew me and I was surprised about that. I just had a lot of fun doing this. Um I worked with Danny on the camera sometimes. I worked with him running the stream. He was teaching me how to do that. He was out there editing. Then uh we did some walkabouts and a lot of intros and stuff. A lot of stuff that I just learned over the year from RCGP from Nick Damon and uh, Matt and those guys on things to go. So it was really good. Danny is f- fucking amazing at what he does. And um, I- I'll give it out to him, Matthew Olson, and these guys. They're like one man streaming jobs. What they do is super impressive. So for one person, and then Lance McDonald is really awesome at his job. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, Scotty's good at his job, a good RD, good at good race caller. But Lance McDonald's just as good. Uh, he has a certain way. He has a very booming voice when he calls it, and he gets excited. And uh, probably if you saw the pass that uh, Brendan Schimmel put on Matty G. Sorry, I think Brendan Schimmel won the overall. You know what? I need to go look at the scores. Somebody's probably, somebody's probably like, no, he didn't, Lefty. He didn't win it. It was Brennan Schimmel. I'm sorry. I believe Brennan Schimmel won uh, the overall of that. Um, I need to find results from that. Shooks. I'm an idiot. But uh, let's see. So in 13.5. No, that's uh, Indy. Sorry. Um, 13.5. Matty G won. Four wheel drive with Schimmel in second. Jovi Levin was fast too. He was excellent fast and doing homework there while he's there. And I'm sorry, guys. I think I made a mistake. So I had to come and check this. Ah, no. And then Brennan Schimmel actually won the overall, had to because he got second and second. I apologize. I apologize, Brennan. Shim Shaky. You won the overall. I apologize. I know his dad's probably upset with me. But I do apologize. You on the overall. Jovi Levin was super fast. Tyler Hooks were fast too, by the way. You know, I'm geeking out on Stalker. 
So, whoo. Um, I actually meant to be playing this while I'm watching this. So maybe I'll put that on while we go. And uh, we can watch a little bit of it. Turn on the volume. There we go. We got the first uh, first four-wheel drive man going on while I talk about this. So I should have had this playing all the time. But I heard you guys go. Some good camera work. Some good angles by Danny. Very good race. Sorry, Brandon. I see you right there. You won the overall. I apologize, good buddy. I apologize. I got all excited about Born of Crime. Uh, and then everybody was going to Cleveland race after this as well. Uh, I haven't even looked at results from that. But great event. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, it was good to see Europeans come over. It was good to see some car racing. Like, I think this is the future of RC, this type of racing. Because track changes are what a lot of people want. They're easy to make. Also, this type of racing can be done in semi-permanent arenas. But this is a permanent arena. And you can just see how beautiful it looks. Everything's matching. The turquoise, the banner placement is on par. They really went in. They really get the show part of this, and uh, Danny Chavez, and uh, he just has a mind for this. Or and I see this race just getting bigger and bigger every year, and I can't wait to go back to it next year. And just, just it's great. It was fun. It was fun. It was. It's a great facility, man. Uh, it has a little hobby shop in there. It was cool going through. I was looking at some of the um, Kyosho stuff. They had that Kyosho bike with the leaning rider. And Robbie used to have superior hobbies, and Robbie, and that was a big giant shop back in the day. And he has just parts and stuff. And you can see boxes that he has from Superior like that are just old parts that he just still has. And I bet you he has a treasure trove of old parts and stuff for a lot of these retro guys who are looking to rebuild cars and all that type of stuff. But great event. Uh, just awesome. To be honest, I really had a lot of fun. I've, I've been to these two 10 scale events now, Masters of Dirt and this one on Dirt, this on Carpet. And I have to admit, I've enjoyed both of them. This one was even better. There was no dust. Ha! It was great. And uh, yeah, just a great facility. I hope to be back there next year. And if you're a carpet racer, serious carpet racer, this is the race you want to go, honestly. So some good battles, too. Just track a lot for some good battles. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Uh, what else? Oh, um, yeah, they just... Just banged it out of the park with this, man. Outdoor pitting for people who traveled, who didn't have tables and stuff. Indoor pitting as well was fully packed. Uh, yeah, just just super, super. Shout out to that kid. I have to give shout out to Jovi Levin. Um, he was there. He's in school, college, university. He was doing homework. I believe he's in university. Might be still in high school. Doing homework and racing at the same time. From NorCal, I believe. Met his dad, met him. And uh, you can see, like, I met a lot of the a lot of the stock guys I met at Mod Weather. It was good to see them again. And uh, oh, so they had Super Pool. So this was the badass thing about it. Super Pool was really fun because uh, Aiden was in it in four wheel drive, and he did the fast lap, and then he went up on this. Uh, if you can see, uh, for those who ain't watching, but there's like a a banked turn on the back there so it's like a bank like a berm but you just go through it straight he actually jumped up there bounced off the signs and did a backflip and landed it and the crowd went insane i love aiden horn man he's so energetic and he puts on a show and man that was the awesome moment of that race met so many good people wow like so many people that were supportive of the podcast uh, and i have to say this i've said it before but right now Florida racing is booming. Like they are racing all the time there every weekend. It's either eight scale or indoor 10 scale like this. They have an indoor clay track. They have outdoor 10 scale tracks. They have plenty of eight scale tracks. They got the RC uh, Lance's Florida RC championships going on. I think just finished up. They just had the Miami GP with for on road down there as well. They're racing a lot of on road. Uh, all out is looking badass. You just put a whole bunch of clay there. I talk to Mike Walker and Trent Walker there all the time, practicing, getting better. Right now, the Southeast is booming. Racing about Florida is booming, booming, booming. And it's good to see. So congratulations, Florida. Uh, we have the Snowbirds coming up. There was some talk about me going to the Snowbirds, but I don't think that's going to happen. I really would like to get 
become more eclectic and go to more races like this and be a part of the stream. I'm really liking that part of it too, being a part of the stream and um, learning about that. If you guys ever want to hire somebody to do this, look at Danny Paz. He is a great option for one person. We're trying to do a teamwork thing where we both go as well. But what he does with editing and, and photos and, and his streaming and all that stuff is exceptional. And it's a, a, a great option for those who don't want to spend live RC money or money for these bigger companies. And they're worth it as well. Don't get me wrong. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to get him some jobs next year as well. So as you can hear, somebody's arguing outside my door. <laughs> Not arguing, but great race. There we see Mika talking to Daniel Kobovic. Uh, and I just think it's going to get bigger and bigger. Thank you to Daniel Chavez and TJ Bradley uh, for getting me out there. Thank you to Lance and everybody, Danny, Dalton, Robbie, Yamig, uh, everybody that I met. Thank you for all the love. Thank you guys for making it fun. Uh, thank you, Clayton. I got to meet Clayton Young finally. Uh, thank you, guys. Some older gentlemen came up from Raw just to meet me, too. Uh, I met Michael from Mike's Hobbies. Man, it's just good to be. I want to go back to Florida. Honestly, I want to go back to Florida. I like to go snowbirds. I like to go hang out for a little bit and go to some of these races. Go to maybe a local Florida race the next week after. So that would be fun if that happens next year. We shall see. But, yeah, put this on your list of races to go to, guys. It was fun. I have an ad playing at this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a good race. Good race. Was glad to be in Florida. And I look, I tell you, I, it's three races I want to go to next year. DNC, I actually have my ticket for that already. Uh, the 10 scale worlds in I had hobby action. I like to go to the 10 scale carpet nets at, at this race track as well. And I like to go to the E buggy worlds in Barcelona, uh, Barcelona, in Barcelona, which is supposed to be happening. So we shall see if that happens and if I can make that happen. All right. So I think that's about it. Uh, I know I rambled on for about an hour, but um, a lot of things I have to catch up on before we go into 2023. So in 2023, we do, oh, sorry. Before we get to 2023, we actually have uh, a Christmas show coming up next week. And we're going to have some giveaways. It's going to be live. It's probably going to be around 3 o'clock in, in the afternoon because you want to be able to get the Europeans on as well. It's going to be me and JQ. And we're just going to, we haven't done a live in quite a long time. So it's going to be fun. We're going to have a recap of the year, do some quizzes, give away some prizes for giveaways. Thank you to the companies that uh, gave us some prizes. If you're a company and you want to give us some prizes for the giveaway for the Christmas show, let us know. We'll take some prizes for our our people, our supporters. Um, 2023 is coming up. I know I travel quite a lot this year. Uh, It kind of... it kind of worked out where I said, I am going to take as much tr- travel as possible. That was, uh, I was going to do that this year. We fully committed as a team, like um, that travel was going to be the focus after DNC to try and grow the NNRC brand myself and just get that exposure. It accumulated, I think, in the highlight of my career being at the Worlds and commentating on the Worlds with Nick Damon and uh, uh, RC Racing TV which was like a dream for me. And then obviously getting, going to Masters of Dirt and doing all the RCGP stuff. And um, then it, you know, getting to this, this Florida race as well. And then the three weeks in South America, which we want to talk about. So lots of travel for me. I did. I know this last month, there was no podcast since before this race. I do apologize once again for that. Uh, but we have one more live show to go. And then back in 2023 next year, uh, I'm not really planning to travel much. I mean, if it happens, it happens. Uh, I do want to go to those three races and I'll probably go looking for uh, sponsorship to go to those races. If you're a company, you wouldn't wish like what we're doing. Want to help me get to one of those races, hit me up. Also, if you're a company and you want to advertise on this podcast, let me know because we're looking for advertisers for next year. Shameless plug, but yeah. Uh, there you can see uh, uh, 
Mikhail Orlovsky was launched into the wall. Everybody blamed Spencer Rivkin. But when you look at it, it was kind of 50 50. So, um, yeah. Travel will. I, I don't know what RCGP is going to do. So that's another reason. I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but I'm sure if it happens, I'll go to those events. And, but yeah, going to stay home unless uh, events kind of see like this race where Danny and the guys had wanted me there. <clears throat> and there's <clears throat> races like this, excuse me. Excuse me, I had to clear my throat. Races like this are you know, getting bigger and doing well. And they see the value of the stream. I'm hoping that uh, I can get to some more races with Danny and WRCE and what he does, because I really like working with Danny. Very nice, nice young man. He does all my intros and stuff. Now I like to get to work with RC racing TV. I work with, I like to work with any of these streaming companies, to be honest. Um, I will take any chance to hone that skill and learn and just work with, uh, different people in the industry and learn a different thing that I, I think I'm, I'm enjoying when I go to these races as well as doing my, my bit of coverage. So I hope that all works out in 2023. Uh, I'm going to have some more fun with RC as well. I've got some projects going on. I have another boat. I have a, a boat to retrieve boats and I have to finish my techno truck, my Mayako and uh, get my crawlers out and getting active and enjoying RC. RC. So, you know, uh, 2023 looking pretty good. Uh, looking to get some more advertisers on the podcast, looking to get some budget to go to some of these races and looking to work with, uh, streams and work. Like I like to see Danny get some work because I think what he does is really great. His editing is by far very good. His photos and he does, he's like a one man team. And I want to thank him for all the support as well. And, uh, Thank you to everybody that supported me this year and continue to support the podcast. I couldn't do it without you guys. And a big thank you to my wife because um, she's the one who kind of has to deal with the kids and has to deal with everything while I'm gone. And I was gone quite a lot this year. If you think about it, I was in America for two weeks for RCGP. Then I did the Masters of Dirt, came home, was home for just shy of two weeks. Then I was gone for four weeks. And that was just the end of the year. So she had to go through a lot. And I thank uh, my wife, Melissa, my beautiful wife, Melissa, for her support because I couldn't do it without her. Uh, but that's enough about that. Let's get Robert and JQ on her. We're going to talk about the J- JQ. I must want to say JQ Racing because I want to say JQ Racing because we first did this tour back in 2017 as JQ Racing. It was my first RC trip where everything, I did anything like this. I was super excited. I was five years younger as well. I didn't have two kids. And uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, this year, we did the Invisible Speed Latin America Tour. It started out in Peru, uh, finished in Chile, and we went to Brazil in between. And uh, I got to go have the privilege of traveling with uh, Robert Battier, who now has three different nicknames that you'll find about her shortly. And it was a lot of fun. And we, 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 I think we bonded and we all became better friends. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, so thank you for all that's listened this far. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of this podcast with uh, JQ and uh, Robert Batty. And thank you to, once again, thank you to Danny Chavez, TJ Bradley, Brent Densford, all the companies that supported the NNRC this year and got me to races, high tech especially. And I look forward to the new things we're going to do in 2023 with everybody. So here we are, Robert Battier, JQ, and myself talking about the Latin America, the Invisible Speed Latin America tour that we just came off of. Well, Beaker, that sun in Chile did you well, very tanned, just like me. Yeah. Uh, I saw you was uh, ice swimming the other night. Yes, I was. First time ever I did, did that. So you go in the sauna first, and then you go in the lake. Break a hole I've in the ice. Uh, yeah, you, it's cold. You still got that staticky noise coming for something. You probably got a cable jacked up somewhere, somewhere on your stuff I, there. You, I don't know, man. It's so all janky cables, now. Yeah. yeah, probably got cables crossed and everything and all that stuff. Just like your brain. Um, you know what? Uh, we have to talk about our tour, but we have to talk about something that we haven't talked about, and he hasn't talked about it. But uh, you have a Mayako has a new driver, and his name is Robert Badier. I mean, we all know this. 
but he haven't officially talked about it since it happened. Yeah. So you know what? I thought this video was really good, and I want to play it again because I thought whoever thought of this done a really good job, and uh, let's watch it. Great video, JQ. Great video. Uh, I was super impressed with it. It almost brings tears to my eyes. It's pretty uh, iconic, representing 12 years, well, more than 12 years of Robert, you know, culminating with his 2012 World Championship in Argentina. And he was kind of hitting that side of that driver's stand kind of hard. I'm wondering if he started this whole theme of hitting the driver's stand slapping the driver's hand. But these guys have to be careful doing that because then they can break their hands and then they can ruin their career. So no more slapping of the driver's stand, please, drivers. We don't want you to break your hands. Uh, but let's Barry bring him Baker. in. Barry Baker, but he broke his hand doing it. But slapping. <laughs> but that's punching. Slapping the thing is, yeah, that looks kind of like it hurts. But um, uh, do we? Do you want to talk about this or we just bring him in and we'll talk about how all this yeah, Bring him in. He can talk about it. <laughs> Hello, Bob. Hello, how are you? Are we are we talking to Robert Batty or Bob Batty right now? Uh, I would say Robert right now. <laughs> okay, good. Because Bob made we, an appearance at the end. Yeah, and on our tour, we I mean, we've known each other, but not really known each other, right? <laughs> so on this tour, we discovered that Robert has an alter ego. He's way more savage than we thought. <laughs> Robert, yes, he's actually like got a politically few correct, now. nice guy, you know. But then there's Bob. That's the savage side. I like both. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh what's up, Robert? Uh it feels, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda woke up this morning missing you guys. Uh <laughs> woke up Tuesday morning in the hotel kind of by myself and was like, Oh, I don't have no Robert or JQ to go bother first thing in the morning or have breakfast <laughs> with. You know, I woke up and I was all alone and it was epic. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, well we're gonna talk about the tour a little bit, but uh Robert, uh JQ, I'm going to mute you because your, your shit's making too much noise. And uh, what's up, Robert? Welcome to the podcast Hello. again. You wasn't here before the Worlds. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to record while we was in Latin America because so we was really busy. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess let's talk about this new position that you're in here at Mayako. I know what it is, but let's explain to the world what it is. We'll bring JQ in. He can unmute himself when he wants. But uh, <laughs> 
Tell us about this decision. Mugen for 12 years, uh, world championship, European championship, one European championship with him, I believe. Uh, with Mugen, two. Two, okay. Um, yeah. Very, some good finishes, memorable finishes, memorable career with them. But like all things, that com- came to an end. And now you're with Mayako. You are in a different position, more like a, like I forget what the actual official sign mm-hmm. of title is. JQ, I'm sure, will come in her and let me know. But more like a team, I want to say like a team manager or team grand pooba of <laughs> Mayako right now. Yeah, it's all about, I mean, I was looking for something more than not only driving. As I think, I mean, I'm still some years for driving, but I wanted to to start something else, just thinking also on future and so on. So, yeah, I've been trying this since quite years ago. It's not like that mm-hmm. I decided in half a year, but I wanted more and more. And yeah, but I really wanted some project that I really believe in on that and I really like uh, as much as to to live from a from a brand like Mugen, for example, a well known brand and a lot of years with a relationship and so on. But it it only can happen if I find if I, I would find something like that really matter, that really like and that enjoy. Uh, from my side to to work with i mean uh it's a difficult uh decision for sure but i really like so much what i'm doing now like i'm in a in a good point into my yako i guess like organizing a little bit everything and just taking care of all our service centers customers and yeah, for sure, still learning. I mean, I'm not 100% still, just everything is super new for me. And yeah, for sure. I I mean, I, I get a lot of help from Joseph, Scott, and Bowman, and so on, all, all my ACO team. And yeah, for sure, every day I'm getting better and better. Uh, in South America, you, you also saw that I have quite a... <laughs> A hard work with yeah, my ethic. With um, WhatsApp is your friend. You was busy. This is all I saw. Like he was going <laughs> time from morning to, to to nighttime, even at the race, just going. Uh, very hard work ethic. I know it must have been incredible because <clears throat> I remember the amount of messages I used to get. You are definitely way more popular than me, so you probably got a shit ton of messages. And you know, what, Robert, you can be a little savage here. You can curse. You know, you really curse really well in English. Um, but uh, I guess I want to start with, I, I kind of knew something was happening at Mugen when I heard that they didn't, you weren't being, weren't able to come to DNC. They weren't sending to DNC. You have a yeah. race. And, and I knew something was up <clears throat> then. And uh, I guess when did this transition start? JQ, you can chime in too. Uh, when did you start probably talking to Robert about this. I know for a long time, JQ, you've wanted to work with Robert. Then, of course, at the world, his brother, who I haven't seen in a while, he's racing the car. He did pretty well. So yeah. then it started all, that started adding fuel to the fire of the rumors that you was going over to Mayako. JQ, how did this all start with uh, with you and Robert? <clears throat> and what was you looking for when you, when Mayako and yourself decided to hire uh, Robert? Because he's your boss too, by the way. <laughs> Robert's my boss. Yes. yes. Robert has the power to fire you. So, uh, okay, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. Why am I not surprised? I can't fucking... I, honestly, I cannot remember. Whatever I say now is going to be a lie because I can't <laughs> remember. Robert, how did it happen? To be honest, <laughs> I, I don't either. remember exactly, but I guess... I mean, we got my my brother, like... I would say May or May from this year, something like that, or April. I don't know. Like, yeah, we talk a little bit and so on. But I was, um, I had a Mugen contract and so on. So I for sure didn't 
want to to leave a brand in the middle of the season or just not respecting a contract and being the year's world and so on. So, yeah, it was something like this. I also wanted that first to to check the car a little bit, to drive the car a little bit and be sure about this step. Because for me, it's quite a big step since um, on, for example, economic side, it's less than than it was before. That's That's the point. And it had to be 100%, I would say, passion on the project. And just, I want to be here and I like the idea. I like how Mayako works on RC. It's, I know we all in Mayako know that everything will be difficult because we are the first one just changing a little bit the way our RC a brand is taking from from the customers like they don't really see Mayako as a normal brand so I think mainly the yeah this year and the next year will be a little bit like trying to let people understand what we are doing and but I think once they realize everything I think many many people will will join and I also think uh, many of the other brands will try to make something similar because that's what we have to do I guess on the competition side for sure uh, but we will I think we will be a little bit uh, forward so I think we are in a good position now for sure we will not be uh, the best brand in 2023 or the most common and things like that we are not also looking this. I mean, we are not really looking to sell thousands and thousands of cars, but we are looking to have a strong community, people that believe so much in the project and mm-hmm. people that really likes Mayako. So they they are Mayako and they understand and they fully understand if we have any problem or if we, I don't know, let's say we do a new part and it, it is not, as we expect it, or it's something wrong on that, or things like that. So at least to understand why, and to understand what are we doing, and things like that. For sure, for members, it's so much easier, because they have a close contact with us. And for a, let's say, normal community, or normal customer, I don't know how to, to say exactly. For them, I guess, they will they will be able to to know also, about all this thing because on the Discord we say everything, mm-hmm. but but yeah, more looking about the this kind of passion guys on the RC that really wants to be involved. Yeah, I actually remembered. I think that we spoke before Mayako existed. I think that yeah. I approached you before that change happened, before Ronefako signed. Already then. But that's, that time, it didn't work, and you were with me again. But then, yeah. I don't remember then how this finally happened, that you switched. Uh, but to go back to what you were saying, that Mayako is doing something different, uh, the sort of, my view is that you were a very key person to get involved in the project, because um, the main thing that Mayako does different is not sponsoring everyone, not giving discounts to everyone and building the business in that way because that's what practically every other RC brand is doing. So it's it's a race to the bottom in a way. Like who can give the cheapest price? Okay, they get the drivers. But the winner of that race will lose because they are selling at such a cheap price. They don't make money. It doesn't make sense. So you have to find another way to to be attractive to people than than just the price. So with Mayako, the idea was, okay, let's make a really good product and then build a community around that where the value is the product itself and all the knowledge, support, and community aspect around that. Uh, So to do that takes time, but it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem because how do you get the people who will become the community when you don't have the community to start with for them to be attracted to join. Does that make sense? Like 
it you just have to somehow get it to work far enough where it it begins to be attractive to people people join and then it can actually function as it's supposed to be then then people will actually get the value that uh, they are looking to get and this is a part or a step forward in that direction so now when we have robert on board robert is the people person you know the opposite to me he is the guy who is the link link between the mayako factory and customers service centers uh link between service centers and and uh just uh sort of mayako races around the world in a way robert's role is very broad because he is communicating with a lot of different people bringing them together so even if he doesn't do the actual thing he's still communicating with everyone and bringing them together and making sure that things get done so it it was a really important um role that needed filling for mayako to function and the difficulty is that person has to be someone who people know and respect and like and they have to be they have to have a uh, credibility in the rc scene and they have to be the right kind of person to do the job they have to have the experience and the right kind of a mentality and attitude so as you can expect pe- finding people like that is really hard there are not many people in that uh with those skills and also in in a position to where they can join something like mayako so maybe if you find a person like that oh this person would be perfect well they they already have something they're doing and they're not going to leave that so it was a lot like when ronne falk signed it was sort of lucky timing in a way that just as this uh, opportunity was there robert was available and and yeah the rest is history yeah so but it's cool now jq you're working with two world champions well three we we cannot exclude greg delani uh but you got ronne falk you got robert badie obviously there's some links there's lots of chatter going on about another link to another world champion i don't know if i'm going to say names sir or if you can say any information concerning that or are you pleading the fifth on that begani <clears throat> no that's not what i was about. but anyway huh <laughs> he is he is but robert i i've seen you i'm going to mute you again jq uh I've seen you busy right away stepped into the role WhatsApp what well, we was busy in Peru busy in uh Brazil uh I even just working watching your work ethic when it came to doing things so it's good to have you on board even, and just good to get to know you over these last three weeks because I've, I've we spoke but not really known each other and <clears throat> the way you've tackled this right off the bat I have no doubt that you are the right guy for this and I look forward to seeing what you do with my uncle as well as with the car because let's not forget you also are going to be driving yeah and you uh still are fast as we saw in south uh america and you i mean you probably weren't even pushing as hard as you should be so we're looking forward to seeing what you do you're going to montpellier first <clears throat> and then uh you're going to dnc dnc yeah so and also what i didn't realize is that you're kind of doing this with hot race too as well yeah. and so you've had practice with that Uh, you're very business savvy. You know when to say no as well, which I like. And I think you're going to do really well in this position. Of course, JQ likes that. You saw him park up saying no. <laughs> no, I just remember that. because uh, you you like the fact that uh, Robert fucks me off also like you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I ended up fucking <laughs> yeah. Robert off quite a lot at the end of the trip, though, because he was starting to get like you up a little bit. And he's like, well, you're fucking me off just like you fuck off, JQ. I was like, yeah, well, <laughs> when you make mistakes way out there and I got to go run after you, I'm going to fuck you off. Um, <laughs> but cool. So I guess that's about it. I wanted to touch on that. Uh, we are here to talk about the Latin America tour that we all three of us just partook in. It was a lot of fun. It was long. We're happy to be home. But it was when we looking back, I like I really did miss you guys. You guys kind of got into a routine. And um a little bit about the organization of this. So when I believe I mentioned this to you earlier this year JQ and I was like, "Hey, you know what? It would be cool if we went back to South America, done what we do what we did, <clears throat> but do it with the social media that we know now. We're all we're all well you and I are both a little bit more uh climbed up the ladder a little bit in certain ways." 
uh, more established. And you're like, yeah, maybe we should. And then I think around the by the world's time, you started saying, well, you should investigate it. And that usually means we're going to do it. So I started investigating it. And then you threw in the other uh, issue was, oh, and Robert's going, but we can't let nobody know he's going at the same time. Then we had to figure it out when he could go because I wanted to do it early in November. And we ended up doing a very late November, uh, beginning of uh, December. And um, man, as usual, you stressed me out about it. And it was a lot of stress. And then Robert got on board. And then I was able to tell people that Robert was coming. So that helped. Then we had to get the pre-orders, which I hate, which was a pain in the ass. You You could... You could tell people that Robert was going because it was invisible speed. So right, he yeah. was going for invisible speed. Right. That was the idea. That's when it was, it made it a little easier. And then Robert got in and um, we was in a whole bunch of WhatsApp groups and he, he got to know a lot of the people and they were messaging him and he did a banging job and we raised the money to go down there, do these clinics. And our first stop was actually in Peru. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I really wanted to go. I mean, it was so many countries just bouncing around. As well, I know, Robert, you said Bolivia, what about Colombia, what about Argentina? But we decided on not going to those countries this time around. One, because we went Bolivia. One, we also went Colombia. I mean, just, I just wasn't sure how things were going. I know they're racing, but I know like every time I talk to somebody there, economically, it's not too good, especially in Argentina and Colombia. <clears throat> but we decided on these three countries. One, uh, Peru, because... When Joseph and I went there in 2017, they weren't even racing. They weren't racing nitro. We introduced nitro there. We snuck it through in power A bottles. We met Sergio. Uh, you're muted, JQ. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure well, there was nitro I just racing. remember that smuggling of the fuel. I just remember when remember. it rolled on the back of the bus and you had to go yeah, in the yeah. back of the bus and go find yeah. it so nobody would drink it. Um, yeah, we went through customs and all that, like that. So I. Uh, Sergio is a person I talk to probably at least twice or three times a month and now and sometimes once a week. And he was showing me how the racing has improved and he's, not, he's been a big influence in that in Peru. They went from not racing at all to having about 25 to 30 people at a, one of their major races. So I really wanted to go there. Plus the food was really good in Peru and I wanted to go back there just because of that. And I wanted to see Lima. So it was one of the rising and it's still one of the growing RC community. So our first stop was there. I got there before you guys the day before we got there. You got there the next day. This is when our first, we should have learned something from this Airbnb because it wasn't like the pictures had shown and it was actually smaller than what we thought. So luckily I actually stayed up in, um, we, we got to talk about the other Airbnb disaster, but, but yeah. luckily, <laughs> luckily we, I ended up staying in Sergio's wrench room on the pullout sofa and he, they lived in like Mita, Florida is right in the center of Lima. Beautiful. I really enjoyed Lima as a city and I'm not a city guy. We had good breakfast every morning down below at the cafe, but there, those girls knew what we wanted every morning. Like I like Peru a lot. I liked Peru a lot. The, the track was probably the easiest of them besides the surface. It was the smallest track, but I think it was the best, uh, one of the best attended and probably the best clinics because we actually was the one clinic that we did two days. So I just want people to understand these are, these are clinics planned around and then a race. It's not a race planned around a clinic. The goal is to do two day clinics and do a race at the end. Peru is the only place we really got to do that because we couldn't do it in Brazil. And in Chile, we was too busy with doing clinics every day. <clears throat> but I think it went well. We had it in a, like in a, at an apartment building and a, they had a bot like a, a I guess it's a entertainment hall that everything set up. Uh, Robert came in there. He was really good. I probably should get these pictures out there and we can show people this. Um, but I just thought it was really good. That first clinic in Peru, we was all fresh. We was there. And yeah, tell us what your thoughts on Peru was when you first got there, Robert. It was actually good. I mean, the, yeah, as you told, the old place and everything was good. And the track was actually pretty good. Like surface was a little difficult, like slippery and grippy at the same time, like patches and so on. But 
people were super kind. I think on the clinic, we had fun a lot. We were all really together and they were listening so much. I think they, they enjoy it a lot. Um, they had a lot of questions. They wanted to really know more about RC and I think it's, it has been good. And now I have uh, messages from many people from Peru, like making changes that we said and just making things as, as, as we advise them and so on that it, that makes the, the clinic to have a, to have more sense, like everything we, we teach them, they are practicing it. And I think we, we help much. And for sure, we learn from them also. Like, I mean, I'm a kind of guy that I think I learn every day that I, I don't know everything for sure. And anytime I go to a country or anytime I meet someone, uh, I just learn from, I just learn from them so much. But yeah, the, the time in Peru, I, I liked, I liked a lot. And we met yeah. a lot of new people and kind people. Yes. Uh, I also think that the reason why Peru was more like a, an immediate success was maybe these guys have never really had somebody of your caliber come to come to this track. A lot, a lot of these tracks haven't, by the way. But I mean, a lot, I think Offer is still kind of new in Peru. Uh, it's it's been there for about five years now since we left. Yeah, compared to where in Argentina, Chile, and Brazil. They've been racing for many, many years. So maybe off it was something back in the day, <clears throat> but it's it's kind of new. Uh, Sergio and the other guys, Extreme Hobbies, they've done a good job here getting it going at this small track in Lima. And um, they have a few tracks elsewhere in Peru, Cusco, and they had actually about four tracks. Sergio has a track in Tacna. So it was good to go there. I think they really, uh, I think they, I think out of all these groups, these guys benefited the most because they were kind of very open to instruction, I think, as well. Yeah, Which, I agree. Because of, because of being new, you know what I mean? They were very open to instruction. They asked a lot of questions. They paid attention. Uh, when you can see, like, look at Fernando. Here's Fernando, a.k.a. Lucifer. He, I think, <laughs> he is one of the guys that improved the most. And there's Luchito. Very, very nice man. I think he's one of the people that learned the most because he was one of the most improved drivers I saw on the Sunday race, you know, and he was able to go around the, around those cones and then he was able to apply that on the race day that we had. And what also was good was to see guys that uh, haven't made A mains and stuff be so happy to make it. Yeah. And I think Peru really benefited from the clinics there. Let's 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 talk to JQ because obviously JQ made a splash while he was unfucking everybody's cars. <laughs> what are your thoughts on it, JQ? Yeah, I think it was good. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how it would go. I mean, I we didn't have much of a plan really. <laughs> Me and Robert sort of figured it out on the flight. I think what we were going <laughs> to do. The one in Peru, I think, was definitely the best like you said, because we had two days and the first day wasn't at the track. So we got everything ready. Then the second day at the track, uh, everyone was ready to go. And also we had two clear groups, two distinct groups, and everyone was eager to learn, I felt. So they sort of paid attention a bit more and did what we sort of asked them to do. So it was a bit easier. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't a complete mess, <laughs> you know? So it, there was a certain point to it, you know? So tuning the engines and then driving driving the track with cones on it and trying to avoid the cones and and uh, setting ride height, understanding what ride height affects, how that ride height affects the car, setting droop, understanding how that affects the car. So I think that the people who took part and did all of the things, I think that they went away having learned something, which is really the point, I guess. So, yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. One. I would agree with that. 
And we made some really good friends there. Uh, obviously, you and I both knew Sergio and his girlfriend before. But then we made some really good friends. So Marcos, uh, Fernando, who came with us to... Actually, came uh, Mar- Fernando came with us to Chile, which was cool. And I think you made quite a big splash there, Robert, with everybody. Um, I know now Sergio is the Mayako uh, service center there, and he's happy about that. So, I, and dude, I just have to say that, honestly, no offense to Brazil and, and Chile, but the Peruvian food was off the hook. I really liked <laughs> Lima as a city, too. Uh, traffic really, was sucked. Traffic you sucked. really like food, man. Look who's talking. Look who's talking. <laughs> this guy who has to, hey, this guy who has to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and he's gone. You know what happened to him? No, and someone called me. Sorry. He has to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then go to the bathroom at least three times a day. Um, <laughs> but, dude, you have to admit the food was the best at. He's probably somebody called him just now. The food was the best. Ceviche, Robert, Jake, you didn't eat the ceviche because you was being a. What you know what pissed me off is you didn't eat the ceviche in Peru, but you ate the raw tuna fish in Chile. Yeah, but that was a mistake. You mean you to. didn't know that it was raw? Hey, no, 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 I knew, but I didn't thought it. I specifically asked if it's cooked. All right, all right. So the food was. What was your favorite meal in Peru, Robert? You ate a lot of stuff. You ate like Carl's heart and all that stuff. Yeah, ceviche, like. But you had it without the hot sauce. Yeah, I didn't like hot sauce. Oh, it was great with the hot sauce. It's so great. So great. Uh, we went out to a lot of nice... And, and it was pretty fairly cheap in Peru as well. And we went out to a lot of nice restaurants with people. Peru had the best drinks too, by the way, JQ. Pisco Sours and... Pisco Sour. Oh, I loved Pisco Sours. And um, they had that other drink that they had. So a really good time in Peru. We actually spent the most time in Peru because we left on the Thursday... And we we stayed in the same uh, apartment building as Sergio as well, so it made it easier. I did go to the gym three days. That was about it. Um, there was no more gym after that. There was plenty of walking around. Robert did go to the gym, though. He did go to the gym religiously every yeah. morning, almost every morning. He did miss one or two days. Yeah. Jake, you started to go. So after anything you want to add about Peru before we go into Brazil? Just to thank them about all the hospitality, yes. everyone. Like, I don't know all names for sure because I'm so bad on that. But like, the ones that came with us for dinner, like mm-hmm. Ivan, uh, Domenico, um, the ones Fernando, you told, like Fernando. Marcos. Fernando got a Mayako card today. Oh, did he? Nice. Yeah. Did it, does it say Lucifer? Yes, and great. Lucifer 666. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Fernando, I want to be like Fernando when I get older. He likes to party. Too. He likes to drink. He bought some great rum. Ooh, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I want to say thank you to Sergio and Vanina. They took us around all weekend, all that whole week. We yeah. ram- I don't know how we got all that stuff in that Porsche Cayenne. And, uh, Which are the catacombs, also. Yes, the catacombs is good. JQ was taking illegal pictures there. He was upset because he missed the protest. We missed the protest by a couple of hours. That's true. Yeah, but and now they have a lot more protests. Jeez. Yeah, they have new president. Uh, JQ, actually, we was that was our first day off, and we almost got caught. We almost got went into the spiral of day drinking. JQ, you know I like I. day drinking. I know. I was looking forward. We did not do one one day drinking day at all. So the fa- how the day drinking started was uh, Robert wanted to buy some souvenirs or something. So we yeah. were all in a souvenir shop, and then I just went missing. Like, I left. <laughs> I bought my magnet and left and went to the bar next door and <laughs> sat down with a drink. And then I just saw you guys, like, you know, shopping and this and that. And then at some point, just walk out, and you see me there alone drinking. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm joining you. <laughs> They're like, we're going to go to the catacombs. I'm like, forget those catacombs. Let's have another piece go sour. And then, then we snuck out of the catacombs while you guys were there doing the tour. Yeah, we did. So we wanted some more Pisco Sour. We're sorry. The history was enough. JQ took enough <laughs> illegal pictures. And, um, you know, thank God that the church didn't fall down on us because JQ entered it. Great time in Peru. Uh, then we had to fly. This is our first flight together. 
So we were flying LATAM. Uh, you and JQ flew over together. Then we all th- flew over on LATAM to uh, Sao Paulo. And of course, this happens to be the first incident of actually JQ. So Robert was sitting right in front of us. And JQ, my seat was empty. So you came sat next to me. And uh, this is when we had the first seatbelt extension incident. <laughs> And it's so crazy. Like that lady knew exactly what I was calling her for. And she came over for that. And we didn't ask her for the seat by the center. We just called her over and she came over immediately with that. So she must have knew my fat ass needed it. But to my defense, I did not. These it's it's the South American planes built small. Yeah, but Smaller. you should do what Degani does. So Degani just lifts up his belly and tucks the seatbelt under his belly. He doesn't actually connect it. Yeah, but then if when the plane drops 3,000 feet and you <laughs> slam up and break your neck, you're fucked. So that ain't happening. <clears throat> so we got into Brazil uh, about 10 o'clock that night. Sao Paulo, huge fucking airport. I felt like we was walking forever in that airport to get to the parking lot. It was so big when we got there that the, uh, Dr. J or Dr. Hey, <laughs> Giuliano, he forgot where he parked his car. So I want to say thank you to Giuliano and Henry Winnick for coming to pick us up. They actually went out of their way, drove us to Junjiai, the hour and a half from there. And I thought they were staying there and they actually had to drive back to Sao Paulo. So uh, we fly over there. I was talking to Eduardo Rossi. He's the one who organized all of this. We're going to David Davidson's track, which is in Junjiai National Park. Uh, beautiful place. Beautiful yeah. track. I consider Davey to be one of the best track builders in the world. He builds some great tracks. He's also a really good painter. Brazil is the biggest. I want to say Brazil is the biggest market in, in South America. We do to its size. It's, people have to understand that Brazil is about the size of just a little bit smaller than America. 220, 250 million people. And Sao Paulo has 22 million people in it. So uh, Junjiai has a couple million. I think, what was it? Like 546. But um, we got there, little different temperatures from Peru. Peru was nice. It was cold. It was just right. It wasn't, you know, at nighttime, you could get away for a hoodie or shorts and a, and a shirt. But uh, in Junjai, it got more like my weather. It was humid. It was hot. And we got there. We're sweating the first day. Uh, we stayed at a red roof inn. Believe it or not, there's a red roof inn in Junjai, just like the same symbols and everything as a regular red roof inn in America. It had a decent breakfast, and it was pretty cheap. You and JQ shared a room. I had a room to myself because you guys didn't want to snore. Yeah, you smile, JQ. We all <laughs> smile because um, nobody wanted to uh, deal with my snoring besides Fred Costa, who had to deal with it for a night. And um, You were yeah. lucky. Yeah, we were lucky because I snore a lot. Inhale, exhale. So, Brazil, uh, we pull up to the track. It's actually bigger than I thought it was. It's also multi-leveled, and it I'm telling you guys, it's the highest driver's lane. It's higher than uh, Redavon. It's got to be. Think about it. How many steps you had to walk up to get up to that driver's lane, to the top top? Redavon is really high. higher, I guess. No, not higher. Not higher. But I don't, I don't agree with you, Robert. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, this close. place also... We could it's say very close. close. It's high. This place has an on-road track. I believe this is the track where Adrian Bertin won his 2004 10 scale yeah. worlds. Yeah, he told That's me. That's also multi-level. It, it needs a little work. Probably needs some refurbishing. It has an airfield. It has an RC airfield. It has bathrooms everywhere. This is a national park. They have uh, like volleyball, football. They have bike trails, walking trails, all asphalted. So you see people renting bikes, walking around. And everyone was like, on the weekends, it's going to be packed. And they were right. We went there to test on the Friday, right? Yeah. yeah. And there months. was a, a big spider right up in the, <laughs> right above us that was eating flies and made JQ nervous. Uh, yeah, I really like, I think this is my favorite track of the entire, excuse me, the, the my favorite track of the entire trip. That we went yeah, to. and. And they had an open class, so I got to race. That was epic. Yes. <laughs> yes. I raced you raced regional basic Mayako MX8 stock, no option parts, nothing. Box Should we say that you setup. raced hungover too? I may or may not have been hungover and exhausted from some extracurricular activities. 
but I did race. <laughs> I didn't practice nothing. I was just wrenching for Robert. And then uh, the main comes around and I'm like, yeah, let's go. So I threw it down yeah. for the main. Started dead last and had an epic battle. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube and it's also on IG. No, all out RC. No, no out. No I, control. No, no control. control. <clears throat> but anyway, let's get back. So this was going to be our biggest clinic. I think we had 25 people to get through on yeah. Saturday. This was, this was a busy day. It was hot. It was um, busy, busy. There was a lot of people there. We couldn't do a two-day clinic here because of people working. So we had to start early in the morning, and we got it done. And it was a, it was a marathon, I think. And uh, wow, it was you and JQ once again, the stars doing your work. Uh, we had Fred Costa who was actually doing the the translation. Uh, Translation, which really affected me. I, you know, when I was in, in Brazil, I kept wanting to speak Spanish to everybody, and nobody fucking understood me. Not that they understood yeah. me in Spanish anyway. Yeah, just two, understand. two or three Spanish they were there, but yes. the other ones, nothing like English, everything. Yeah, and then everywhere we went, uh, like I'm thinking, like man, I, 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 I could understand a little bit of what the people were saying. I could understand a lot, but they had no idea what we were saying. And like you just gave up speaking Spanish. You just said English, English. Yeah, sure. Nobody spoke English. Um, but that was a big hurdle. But we had Fred to most of the people that raced, they spoke English, and that was good. Some of them didn't, but he did a great job of translating. And we met Fernando and Duars. They took us back and forth to the track every day, which was really great. They were staying at our hotel. Uh, we also met the guys, Orsini. And the other two guys from Rio de Janeiro, they came up and we ended up hanging out with them every night. I think the best night was the Saturday night after the clinic. We all went out to that, that nice plaza and went up to yeah. that whole Brazilian restaurant. Um, and I really enjoyed the food. We had a lot of different drinks there. This is the night JQ went and hung out on his own by himself in Brazil till five o'clock in the morning. And you're muted. You're muted. So we can't hear you. I did send you a video where like four or five girls told you to go <laughs> F yourself in Portuguese. I can't you remember did. how I managed to pull that off though. I'm like, well, I, the video is just like, do you have the video? I funny. do not. I don't have the video. It's on WhatsApp. But oh, okay. uh, I actually, so we went out, we had a good night and then you insisted on staying out and you're like, come on, lefty, let's go. And I'm like, no, no, fuck you, JQ. We have <laughs> a race to go to tomorrow, and I cannot. If I come home at, if I go with you, I'm coming home at four o'clock in the morning. I know this. So sad, so done. Everybody was like, "You guys left JQ out in Brazil," and I'm like, "Yes, he's a 40 year old man. You'll figure it out." He's and not. You, were, no you money. were actually worried. I'm 39. I was worried. I was worried at first. I'm you 39. Were worried. I was worried at first, but not worried enough to go out with him. So yeah. then he, when he sent me that, that video at two o'clock in the morning, I knew he was all right. I knew he was fine. And then I went back to sleep and I was fine. Then when I went and knocked on the door and he was still asleep in the bed and he would not get up, we just left him and we went yeah. to the race. And then he showed up to the race, like two hours late, sitting on the ground, looking sorry for himself. <laughs> Talking about, I'm tired. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, go have a beer and let's get back to action her. And yeah, I must admit, JQ, you did have a beer. You got back and you 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 caught, you caught your second win and you, you had a good good second half of the race day. Yeah, I pulled through. You did. No by worry. the skin of your teeth. Yeah. By the skin of your teeth. Um <clears throat> racing in Brazil was good. Uh we had Alex Lim who was there. He is uh from Paraguay, Korean descent. I guess it's Korean, Parigan, Parigan, Paraguayan. Yeah. Matias came also from Paraguay. Yeah. Here's Matias right here from Paraguay as well. Yeah. Uh, there's Alex Lim and his dad. We met him at there's Juan Carlo. There's Juan Carlo Costas, Portuguese, and Edward and Eduardo Rossi. And there's you, Robert. Got a crowd around you. That's Matias and his dad. You're working on a clutch, I believe. Yeah. Um, I want to say that Brazil had a higher I think the their cars were on point a little bit more. I think just because they've been racing a lot longer, a lot of these guys have traveled to different races. Uh, Brazil's had quite a few South American championships champions as well. 
I think the level of talent or level of driving was way better. Her, I think, I think it was the highest level of all the countries we visited. There were some Probably fast guys yes. there. Yeah. Um, I think less mechanical <coughs> on cars than there was Peru. I think less mechanical on cars, period. JQ says Chile was. But everybody seemed to have decent cars. There were some issues with people with clutches and stuff like that. But um, I think the guys that came, they had a good time. I think guys kind of wanted to see how fast you was too. Um, and then once they saw like, okay, Robert's like, because Lim looked great. Lim was fast. But when you came out there and blew him away by like two and a half seconds. They're like, okay. <laughs> Tell us about this track, Robert. What did you think about Brazil? The track, uh, I know the carpet sections actually were giving you a hard time. because of Yeah, traction. it was, I mean, traction was good on the dirt. Layout was super, super fun. I mean, uh, Davy makes makes super crazy crazy tracks. I mean, he's making a, actually a mix about the good technical like European style, but with jumps like US. So I mean, it's a good mix from my point of view. Not too jumpy, not too flat. So I think he's doing a great job because in Chile, the one we went from him, it was also an awesome track. So. Both of the tracks were crazy, but Brazil had the, the dirt, like super nice, grippy, quite flat, like not really bumps, but only on two or three turns that they put carpet, like it was like ice on the carpet. So it just stopped a little bit the flow of the track, but even those, I enjoyed so much the track. I like a lot. And also, I think I improved quite a lot on on my feeling with the car, like we tested many things and I started to feel really comfortable in the situation. So I think it helped me a lot also on Chile. Yeah. I think, uh, th- like I said, best track, best place to have it too. Um, yeah, there was, there's green Amazon parrots that people buy flying, flocking all in those trees. Capa, Capa Yeras, that none of you saw, but I saw was swimming. <laughs> across the river there's big rodent creatures uh and just people around all the time to uh and i think the atmosphere so when we got there a race day we got there late because we'd have nowhere to sit and like it was full and it was like oh shit it was like everybody was there girlfriends people were eating drinking and it was just buzz the whole entire day um the racing start they actually had e-buggy and truggy as well and then they had two classes like jq said uh, JQ, I forgot to ask you, what was your thoughts on the track and all of that uh, as well? Because you did get to drive quite a lot on this track. You raced. Uh, you did race the open class because you had to pit Robert, not because you uh, you chose to, but you had to pit Robert and you just raced the open class for fun. Because I'm retired. It should, you should have raced it uh, one-handed. I'm going to race the open class at DNC. Um, uh, right. The track was good, yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I like the track. That's the kind of track I really enjoy the most, I would say. Sort of a, a mix between Europe and America. Yeah. I would have to agree there. I, I really like this track a lot. And it was it, was, it had a good flow with the jumps. It was like that timing section, the, the jump section on the second lane on the front of the straightaway was good. And, even, and it went down. This track went opposite. So it went from higher level down to the lower level going away from you. There you can see this massive driver stand, which is actually very tall. And there's the river or lake out there. And you had those rodent creatures swimming around her. There's a fence here. You can't, uh, they can't come through there. There was no snakes there that I know of. There's another picture of the track. There's looking to the left side. There's a more wide up, beautiful facility, beautiful setting. Is Orsini and you talking about, I don't know, Orsini is from <laughs> Rio de Janeiro. There's some more pictures of the track. I thought, yeah, there we go. There's a, a good picture of the whole track. You, the pictures don't do it justice. This is actually a pretty big track. It's It's got a lot of stuff on it. Like Jake, you said, the, the surface was great. Uh, Davey is actually going to redo this track completely in about five months for the next championship. And I know these guys were asking, you know, 
I know a lot of people are asking if this is where the worlds are going to be and stuff like that, but I don't think it's going to be her. It's going to the triumph for some other track. We still don't know. But the race was good. JQ, you did your little race. You raced um, with no control. And it was kind of like you got you just pushed him all the race. You waited for him and he made a mistake and, you know, did crazy donuts and stuff, just waiting for him. And you ended up winning. Robert, you came in, and I think like Dr. Giuliano was right behind you, and Alex Liam for like the first <laughs> few minutes, and I was like, oh wow, like they're gonna like wow. I was shocked at Dr. J, uh, not too much at Alex, uh, but then eventually you just pulled away, did your thing, looking a lot more comfortable with the Mayako at this type of track, and uh, put on a show for everybody. And when we looked around, there was people all around the outside of this track watching too throughout the whole entire day. That was cool too. We actually had a crowd. So there's Fred giving some, some. He was very good. There's the other guys. These guys, these guys, these guys drank a lot of beer too. I like their style. Drank a lot of beer. <laughs> drank a lot of beer. All right. Um, anything you want to add about this race before we go on to talk about our couple of days off in Sao Paulo? No, just it was fun. They were like. I mean, clinics were good. Were good. People was good. Were good also. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think some of them didn't didn't really want to <laughs> to know the lines and so on. Oh, they just were the trying to crush the cones. But <laughs> but yeah, it was funny at the end. Like it was like, all right, just go out there and hit all the cones. Yeah, they uh, made me. They made me run a little bit under the sun, but it's okay. Yeah, I think they just got, they got, once they got going, they're like, we're racing, no matter, even though we're training, we're racing. Uh, but yeah. it did help the, it did help the guy in, the, in, in my opinion, uh, no control because he did well. He drove pretty good the next day and he kept to a lot of those lines where the cones would be, even though he was the most prolific, prolific cone hitter of yeah. Saturday. But he, he actually drove very well on this Sunday. So congratulations. He was super stoked. I think that. that and that older guy at the Associated who finished fourth, and he he like he danced around, did all these circles, and then he oh I forgot my car, and he ran off, and it's like sixty four, <laughs> and he was just so excited to make it. Yeah, uh, that that was really worth it. Uh, Sunday night it was just us. We went out to dinner at a place nearby, and then uh, we caught a we got a lift to Sao Paulo the next day. So we were supposed to go to we did go to Casa Raceway, which is Fernando, our good friend Fernando's track, but it rained all day. So we just ended up eating food. We uh eating food, drinking. Then we went to watch Brazil versus Korea. We caught the fourth goal. We stood up and watched the rest of the game in a bar. Yeah. Good thing we caught that because Brazil would not win after that. <laughs> they <laughs> won that game and then they were out the next game. Yeah. Uh so it was a sad day in Brazil. Good thing we were on there for that too. Because they were so happy that day. So we accomplished something. Jake was like, we got to go watch a, a game in Brazil at a bar. We did it. That was fun. Uh, I really went. I, I always told you guys, I haven't found a country like Dominican Republic yet. Brazil was very close with the atmosphere and everything. So I really enjoyed that part of it. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that uh, just showed us some love there. And then also after, so we couldn't ride. You did drive at Casa. We hung up with Fernando. We got on probably a nice hotel there, which nice. I thought was really nice. He will probably be a the best hotel we stayed in, huh? Fernando, Fernando is going to be a service center for Brazil. Yes, for that's good. Very nice. If it wasn't for Fernando and Duarte and uh, Giuliano, Davy and Winnick, we would have been. We would have had no trance. So I want to thank you for all the help that those guys gave us. And then yeah. the next day we met up with Joe Cial. We did something that you wanted to do. You knocked off the, your bucket list. We went to Interlagos, and yes. I thought we were just going to go and see things from a distance, but we actually got in and got like a personal tour from the manager of the building. Of the yeah, facility. it was crazy. So, do I have pictures of that? I should. I did. I post them up here. Um, tell us about that, Robert. You are a big Formula One fan. You're a big Art and Senna fan. So yeah, this it was, was. I mean. Interlagos is one of the historic tracks from F1. Mm -hmm. That's about the Ayrton Senna things, Brazil and all this stuff. So, yeah, to be honest, I, I would never imagine that I will be there inside Interlagos and 
just visiting all the box area, pit lane, and all track, the S, S Senna chicane, and so on. So it was, even if it was raining a little bit, uh, I enjoyed so much. And I think it was a great moment, I guess. I will, I will remember for sure. For me, it was uh, super nice to see a F1 track like that, like something really iconic. Yeah. So they were transitioning from at this race. So they, they actually had a, a concert there, a Brazilian rock band there the weekend before. And they were getting ready for like, I guess, Brazilian V8 cars with like Rubens, yeah. like at Barrichello. So they were changing all that around. And um, they were also, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just getting that ready, putting up all the like production stuff and all that there for that. So that was really cool. We got to see that inside scoop type of stuff. Uh, we we also got to show the guy what we do. Like we said, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, and we should have a race at Interlagos. Of course, we start talking about <laughs> having a race at Interlagos because they have uh, a, a motocross track and it'd be so cool if we could do something on there. So I I really enjoyed that. I'm a I'm a Formula One fan as well. Not as not as much as you, but I did read uh, Art and Senna's um his biography. So it was super cool to get there and just be around that. I knew it meant a lot to you because you uh your dad and you were a big fan. I even think that guy over there who's being all quiet. I think he even enjoyed it. So uh, walking around, he was busy in artistic mood, taking pictures of you. But this is some of the stuff that we we planned on doing. Like, you know, this is some of the stuff we had to do while we was there. Lots of times we go to these races. This is at Casa Raceway. Lots of times we go to these races and we don't do anything besides see the track. And it was good that we did get to go out and do this. And then Josiel took us on a tour of Sao Paulo, um, which is humongous and full of traffic. I'm still, still blown away by Crack Park <laughs> and um, the open use of uh, drugs and all that stuff right there in the park and the kids, not kids, but teenagers selling drugs. It reminds me of The Wire. I'm telling you, if you ever watched The Wire, HBO special when the, the chief made one part of the city like legal where you can buy and sell drugs and use them. That's what this park was. But beautiful city. Remind me of New York a lot in certain areas. But oh wait, like you had the Central Park right there. It was like homeless and drugs. And then a few blocks away, it was like, ooh, big city, you know, uh, clean, lots of stuff. We didn't really get to venture out much in the city. We just drove through because it was crazy traffic. But good time out. We had good sushi there the night before with Dr. J. I really like the Brazilian meat uh, thingies that we get. You know, the little wheel, you just like, people just continuously bring you meat. Of course, this guy, her, right, her did not eat any of the meat. He ate like few sections. Yeah, you. You were talking about you. Pay attention. I had salmon. And why goes to a Brazilian meat restaurant to have salmon? Some, he ate I, some meat. I had, to, yeah, I had to cut all your steaks, Lefty. So I tasted. You did. You did. That's true. That's true. There was one that was really good. Can't yeah. remember what it was anymore. Picana. You like Pican the Picana? Picana. Picana. Oh, that was awesome. That was really good. What about the Caprajinas? I like those too, but I like them with the local rum. The, what was it? What is it called? Shashkashka or something like that? Kachasa. 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 Yeah, that's what it was. Kachasa. Was that yes. it? Yeah. yeah. So that, when the one guy did, thing. yeah, when he made the caipirinha, it it was like a big shot. <laughs> it was just in a big glass, but he forgot to mix anything else in it. Oh man, those messed me right up that night. And that strong. shot of shakashka, <laughs> whatever, it's good. <laughs> shakashka. <laughs> it's a it's a Russian drink, or I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Shakashka? I don't know. What was it again? Kachasha. Shakashka. Shakasha. Sakasha. There we go. That sounds Russian too. Um, no, it's Kachasha. Kachasha. There we go. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> FDSO. Fuck. Oh. It was good. Um, then we, the good thing, we had good luck. We flew out of there on the Wednesday 
to Santiago. Uh, we didn't have to pay for bags, which was shocking. Yeah, it was strange. Yeah, we were both. We were all walking. I was, just, like, I was just so smooth in the check-in as usual. That's you know what, Jake? You are a very good, accomplished traveler. Yeah, very good at it. Um, and we all got to sit together this time. Uh, kind of. I still had seatbelt issues, and um, hold on. Somebody's messaging me. Uh, but yeah, comfortable flight on Latam over to Santiago Chile, which will be our final destination, probably our busiest time, and surprisingly, the hottest place we visited in all of this travel. So we get to Santiago. This is this is where it gets exciting, people. This is where. So we had planned. Sergio decided to come to Chile with us. He's going to stay with us from. He's come from Peru. Because he's going to get the full uh, pro uh, pro treatment at this race. And then Fernando, his buddy, he was coming, but he was staying in a hotel. So he was looking for an Airbnb for four people. <clears throat> now, we had booked an Airbnb at first, and we found a different one. There's a little more, and it looked like it looked great in the pictures. Right, Robert? Yeah. Looked quite, quite good. Looked very good in the pictures. Uh, and... You know, we had Lewis from RC Adventure come to pick us up. Him and his friend, they loaded us all up. It was, us, it was all three, all four of us, Sergio as well. And he told me prior to this, he goes, you know, that area where you booked that isn't the best. So be careful. He says, not dangerous, but just keep your eyes open. So when we're going through it, I'm like, okay, it's it's a little different, like hippie and stuff. Like lots of, it was a lot of Venezuelans there, you know, a uh, lot of Venezuelans there, a lot of street, like selling stuff on the street. Um, there was some homelessness there, but it wasn't too bad. Then we get to the apartment building. Now I stayed in, we went to Chile in 2017. We stayed in an Airbnb. It was a nice big apartment in the middle of Santiago. That's what I was expecting this to be. And so we go to the apartment building and it looked all right from the outside. I'm like, oh, okay. We go into the check-in. And then as soon as we get to the elevators and stuff, I'm like, something doesn't seem right here. <laughs> <laughs> Then we go up in these elevators. We're going through these hallways that look like, I don't know, they're not bad, but they're definitely not like five-star quality hallways, I would say. It then smelled bad. The, huh? It's, it smelled bad. It smelled bad. It did. You know, there was like burn marks on the electrical outlets and stuff like that. So I was a little worried about that. The walls were really dirty. I was like, well, okay, it's a little older. It needs a little maintenance. Humidity, like 90%. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we walked into this apartment and we just were like, I think all of us were just in shock for a second. Then, of course, it's so quiet in there and this fucking little tiny fridge in this little tiny apartment is just going. <laughs> and we're all sitting around with our bags. And this is literally me sitting in the living room. It was all crammed up. Robert's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> This cannot be happening. And I'm just like, fuck, I'm glad I didn't pick this place. You did. No, 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 no. You go, oh, I like the second place. Let's go with that one. We all agree. Dude, that place was not what was in the picture. So JQ gets on the internet right away. Boom, boom, boom. Smart thinking by you, JQ. Contacted Airbnb, took pictures. And while you did that, I looked for another hotel because we had to get out of there. It was tiny. It was a shit box. It was so small. I think we would have killed each other. Literally. Yeah. And it smelled so bad. Like it smelled someone got killed there or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so bad. No AC would have been so hot. And then we went, we went to go look at like it had a view, view picture of the view. Yeah. It was a wall. It was a wall there. <laughs> it was oh not even gosh. on the street. So I'm like, Hey, Lewis, he went to go get some SIM cards and come back. I'm like, we're coming downstairs. We're going to this hotel. Fuck this place. <laughs> so by the time we're walking out there, I think Airbnb responded to you, JQ, and um, said they you'll get your refund plus $150. Yeah. No, they did, but then they canceled it, and I'm still fighting with them because they say that it's, oh, the owner got back to us and it's the same place, just sort of reorganized a bit. I'm like, what, they moved no. the door? Changed the floor <laughs> of the apartment. This place was literally more expensive the than the thing. hotel. They too. changed the bathroom sink also because it's different. 
Both? No, it's a different apartment. Both bedrooms? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the pictures were okay. Maybe it would have been a bit smaller than expected or something. But this was a whole different apartment with a different floor layout. And it was definitely not anywhere near the level that uh, was on the picture. It was tiny. It was tiny. And it wasn't in the best The walls were so dirty. Like the one bed was by a wall. (laughs) The wall was completely like it, it didn't have graffiti on it. But it looked like it had graffiti on it, just from all the dirt. Yeah. And then the pillows were dirty. So I'm like, there's no way I'm going to lie down on that bed even. At one point, oh, I God. had committed to staying there. Though. I was like, well, we're here. We're going to have to stay here. At one point, and I thought that was what you was going to say. And then you was like, go find a hotel. I was like, thank you. And um, we found a nice hotel uh, right in the center. We went out to dinner for that night. Uh, we found out that everything closes early in Chile. Food wise, especially during the week. And um, we got ready because we had to go to RC Adventure the next day with Lewis and do a clinic there. And actually, I think it was probably a nice little facility there. Uh, not, I think we was in the south of Chile, I think. Maybe. I can't. Oh, of Santiago, sorry. But mm-hmm. it was definitely more green there. They had a farm land right there. Uh, they had three coral courses. Smaller facility had three. I did a walkabout. They had three coral courses, on-road track, off-road track, had a dirt oval track in that off-road track. Uh, they had a small hobby shop, uh, a kitchen, outdoor kitchen, small pit area. It was a nice little quaint little facility. Uh, a lot of you saw the video of Robert going around this track with a lot of with a lot of jumps. This track had a lot of jumps. Very hard to do that back section, especially with a nitro car. But we had... People that, and also we had people from Argentina coming. So we had Nico Bragante there with Thomas Copalati, his like protege and his father. So they came, they brought about a gallon there just running. Robert, you was able to get that jump time and done, but it took you a while. It wasn't something you could do all the time either. That track was hard before those jumps. Yeah, it was too hard. I mean, from my point of view, it was too many consecutive jumps, too many mm-hmm. jumps everywhere. So it was just difficult to make all together at the same time. Also with the carpet. And I mean, Quite difficult for a, I would say for a normal guy, for a medium for a newbie, guy. For, for normal people and for new people, probably good for e-buggy because e-buggy has the power to do yeah, a lot of those easier. jumps. Yeah. But when you did get it, it looked great. And it sounded yeah. great. Um, a little smaller track, great surface, by the way. They did a great treatment of the surface. Uh, we got to meet the owner and Luis was the guy that organized it all. We had people coming from Punta Arenas, which is down in Patagonia, they came up. Uh, Novo Rossi, his car was so fast. Mm-hmm. We did the camp there. Uh, I was eager to get on the crawling course all day. So were you. Not this me. is when we start seeing Roberts. I like bashing. I like crawling. I like everything RC side coming out. Because he was arguing about this like not three days before this. And then he gets there's like, I want to go on the crawling course. It's so cool. Now, that's what we talked about was the crawling course the whole day. You didn't go out on it because it was too late. He was upset about that. But I did, and I will tell you that it was great. I had a lot of fun. And uh, you should get a crawler, Robert. You should. You would like it. You should get one for you and your girlfriend and your dog. No, not your dog. <laughs> but you can take your dog while you go crawling in the mountains with your girlfriend. Yeah, that can be good. Yeah. Then she'll like it because it's easy. Of course, JQ is done out of this part of the conversation because he has no care about bashing crawlers or anything like that. You know, and any of these tracks, he was not phased by anything besides eight scale racing. JK, what did you think of RC Adventure? I don't know. <laughs> you did drive. I didn't drive that much on that track. You it have a cool, video yeah. to do. You have a video uh, to do, remember. Yeah. Yeah, I, remember I you did all video. that video? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be epic. We're gonna have an mm. epic lap of Robert. Uh the thing that I thought was how do they marshal in a race? <laughs> that's that's what they I cannot. was thinking. Yeah. They cannot, I guess. You can't marshal on that race track. It was crazy. It's the most supercross track I've been at, to be honest. If it was yeah, a straight re- straight line rhythm section, that track is it. Yeah. It was the back cool. track. I like that. <clears throat> I, I like it looked great. You know, I it sort of reminded me of how many of the clubs in Europe are, where it's uh, sort of you go there, you hang out, make food, um, mm-hmm. eat food together, you know. It was cool. I liked it. Yeah. 
We also found out that they don't really believe in ice too much in Chile uh, <laughs> or cold drinks at this <laughs> race. So we was like, hey, we want some water. Oh, here you go. Some warm water. But they did have ice for that. Uh, and it was hot, really hot in Chile. It was like 36 degrees. It was super dry. It was summertime. I wasn't expecting to be as hot as it was. But I think we had a good time. I went inside, saw the hobby shop as well. The crawler guys came out to show off their crawlers. And we had barbecue food. We had drinks, beers all day. So for me, it was great. But it was just hot. I remember it being hot. But it did not prepare me for the heat that was coming over the next two days at Cash. So thank you to the RC Adventure. We had a great time there. I really like that facility. I, I keep going back. Look, I think the track was great, except for the jumps. I think the surface was great. I also think that the jumps were well made, by the way. They were very well made because they were able, you were able to do each one of them. Yeah. But uh, it was just too much on that back straight. But that's what the owner wants. That's what he likes. So we can't complain about that. We did the course there. Uh, then some of the guys that attended that course came also to the course at Cash. Nico Brigante, uh, Copaletti. Uh, then we met another Argentinian guy, Tito Cannon. He came with his family. <clears throat> and the first day at Cash wasn't a big, a lot of people there. So we kind of just took that day to test. And this is, uh, I told you, Robert, this was like the best RC facility in the world. And you got to see it. And it truly is. Like yep. as a facility, it's the best one I've ever seen. It has almost everything. Flying fields, on-road track, badass on-road track, almost 300 foot straight away. 10 scale track that looks badass. Eight scale track that's badass. Boat track, go-kart track, helicopter track, clubhouse with restaurant and where you can sit off and watch the boats, watch the planes. Containers, if you remember, you have containers where you can set up your whole hobby shop. Definitely, probably, this facility can hold any event. The only issue, it's kind of far away from yeah. everything. It's about yeah. 40 minutes outside the city of Santiago. So, yeah, it's the only problem. They have the hotel, the nearest hotel. They told me about 30 minutes or 25 <clears throat> to 30 minutes. So. But also... We was excited about this track because of the new layout, but it, I have people, people have to understand. I didn't realize this too, but we're kind of like in a desert area up there. So it was yeah. very desert. Everything was brown. There was no water. Track was dry. Um, I, was, I don't know if they could, they didn't want, they were the, so they got this track rebuilt by Davey um, about two months ago and they're trying everything to, they, they want to maintain a surface that's, going to be perfect and smooth. They want to start with like Barcelos, I think, right? Yeah. But the problem is it's so dry there. And like that track is dry. Like it, like if you were to, it would have took, I don't know how many gallons of water to get it wet and get it perfect. But the, the layout was great. The surface what, is what made this track so difficult. So they had put on like glue. They put on molasses to try to keep it together but it really, it still needs some moisture. There's no moisture. If I've ever seen it, it was big cracks and you would drive and a lot of the surface would come up and then there would be new holes every time you go. That was the most challenging part of this track. Um, but the layout was good. So tell us a little bit about it, what you thought, Robert. And you as well, JQ, because you got to drive on it. Uh, layout was good also. Another layout from Davey. Uh, it was awesome, like super fast. I think if the dirt would be like a uh, standard one, like not too sketchy like it was, uh, it would be more fun. But yeah, to be honest, I mean, the layout was super good. I like it a lot. And actually, it was good also for me to learning about the car in a extreme condition. So I think we did a good job on this side. Also, the clinics, they enjoyed it. I think they, they had fun also. We got many people interested on, on our car also. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think we did a, a great trip overall. And I think people enjoyed so much. And they really understood well about our purpose about Invisible Speed. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of older racers in Chile too, been around for a long time. They came out. They understood that. I know Lewis was really into the whole scene. He like listens to the podcasts and all that type of stuff. Uh, 
I really enjoyed watching the Jets taking off and flying. Wait, before before you go to the Jets, uh, mm-hmm. I I think that in South America now over the last few years and and uh, globally really, but since we visited South America, we focus on that. Like the facilities and the tracks are world class. Like yeah. that, if if you drive on that track, it's just as good as any track in any the world, other. right? And similar also, like the layouts that Davy makes are they're really good, challenging, mm-hmm. g- good jumps, corners, all that stuff. So really, the only thing missing is from if we think about the World Championships, for example, and you look and it's Europeans and American drivers at the top. And then kind of a gap to the rest. There's like one or two Asian drivers thrown in there, you know. But the the rest of the world, really, they like in South America, they have the they they have the infrastructure to have a young kid interested in racing, going to the track, practicing a lot, and becoming a top driver in the world. Like it's possible, right? The thing that's missing is the sort of local knowledge and local um, mentor, in a way, or proof that it's possible. Like someone who is there that people can look up to, like, oh, I'm going to be like that guy, I want to be that, that guy. Like they don't see the speed really. Like what? how fast should I be going? What is the lap time I should have, Right. Because yeah. there's no one, no one there. Like when you become the fastest and you become and you start winning the national championships, you're still like two seconds off the pace, a lap or something, right? So the gap is so big that it's hard to uh, bridge that gap alone. So something like Invisible Speed, for example, I believe can help because the book, the course, all of this information, someone will make that happen for themselves, right? They learn about driving and the car and and improve and they'll do some international races. They have an idea of what that speed is and then they will bring that to their home country. And then that's how the level uh, will be raised eventually. That's, I agree. That's what I think at least. Because there are good guys there. They're, like we always talk about Coutini. Uh, I, I, I personally, still personally think that Argentina has the highest level of racing there. Coutini, Bergante, all very good. Uh, I, I think Coutini is a little better than Bergante. But Bergante works hard. I mean, he burnt two gallons at at just cash, I think. Yeah. You know? Um, and then they, they were still turning laps when we left after the race. I, I, I would have to agree with you, Robert. And I think, I'm sorry, JQ, that going on there with somebody like Robert, maybe not all these people can travel. I mean, Obviously, they can travel, but many haven't traveled to DNCs or Worlds. Some of them have, and not many racers go down there to race. Uh, no companies are sending people down there. They, the South American market doesn't really get the love that it, it should. It's still not, uh, it's not as big as North America. It's not as big as uh, Europe, but it's still, a, a, they, they have history. They have racers. They've been, ra- on road's been big down there. Uh, so it's good to have Robert go down there. He speaks the language. He's he's like a legend, and he goes down there. I mean, even even though they started to race a little early on you in Chile, Robert, that was funny. I'm like, <laughs> I'm coming from the bathroom, and I'm like, hey, you know, like the, over there warming up. Robert and Jake used there. Oh, but my ride height. And then I'm like, as we're walking to the track, I'm like, you know, they're gridding up, right? And then you start getting a little bit hasty. Then Robert's there, like trying to call like one minute as he gets there and he's looking at the guy, the race, the RD is like, you know, give him the infamous, like, what the fuck are you doing? And he gets yeah. up there and then he's arguing with the race director. The race has started now. Robert walks up there, argues with the race director real quick. What are you doing? Like, why didn't you stop the race? And they're like, well, it's your fault. You weren't there. Then he starts like a, three quarters of a lap down and ends up over to, Brigante was flying. I'm like, okay, you caught him up, then you beat, you passed him. I think he's going to put a lap on him. You flamed out because you hit a big rock. Yeah. And then um, you still went on to to beat him. I know it was just funny. I'm looking at you like, Jake Hughes are starting your car. And you're still down the bottom there. 
like doing this to the guy. And I'm like, shouldn't you be up top? Like, come on, let's go. And um, yeah, I think that was they did start that with Archer. I didn't like that. Yeah. But in the end, it's it's still you still uh prevailed. The Brigante drove his ass off. His protege came second. Sergio ended up coming seventh. Um we met the guys there. It was good to see Gaston again. Uh, Gaston was our friend that we met the first time that we made new friends with Lewis. It was good to see him and a couple of guys come from RC Avenger to race uh, as well. And I think at the end, we all had fun. We went out to dinner that night uh, with uh, Pacheco, Lewis, Thomas, and a couple of other guys. And that's when Bob came out. It was like, let's go, Lefty. Let's go have some drinks. I was like, who are you? And where's Robert Battier? Like, you know? Uh, did you get did are I are you the alien known as Bob? Because we've been there all <laughs> week. And this guy all at 10 o'clock. One thing I learned about Robert at 10 o'clock after food, he shuts down. He was like, <laughs> he looks like he's just he's like, you'd be at dinner table, and I'm like, all right, there's Robert. He's gone, shut down. 10 o'clock's calm. He's eight, he's finished. <laughs> Me and JQ are still going. But not this night. He's like, come on, lefty, let's go out and have some drinks. And I was like, we finished. The, the, the work we finished. And it's like, this is our last day. And I was like, what? You were close. You were close to go out. We did go out. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, we had, I'm, 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 I'm had glad we didn't go out. Fernando things. was very convincing to go out. And I was like, no, nope, we're going home. You, you know, in Chile, that's the most tired I've been since I can't even remember when. I was yeah, so was... tired. Of I, just I even like sleeping nine hours and then the next day, like I was just so tired. Yeah. I even had one day, like I think the first day when there's that meme that I posted on Instagram. I think it Marilyn Manson with sunglasses on, and then then it says uh I believe in hate at first sight. Instead of like I believe in love at first sight, it's hate. That's how I felt that first day. I'm like I just can't be around people right now. I need to be alone for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, went, you, went into that, you, 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 you went into your you, shell. Yeah, then you guys all went out to dinner. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Ate at the hotel, went to bed early, had a good sleep. And then I was like functioning the next I day. Think, but even then I was so tired. It was crazy. Yeah, by the time I got to Chile, I was knackered. That would have been four weeks for me. Because yeah. of Florida. Yeah. And we was all like, all right, we should have done this two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Um, but we finished it off strong. You guys went home on the Monday night. I went home. You went home Monday. Sergio went home Monday night. I oh, so I got to go to an action figure shop. Oh, not too God. far from not too far from the hotel, JQ. It was actually a hobby shop, but it was <laughs> awesome. It wasn't like a hobby shop like we know. It was like a hobby shop that sold war hammers and all that stuff. And they had so many action figures. I bought my daughter something. I bought myself one action figure, JQ. One action figure. It was big too. Um, and I went to the mall and all that there during the day with Sergio. It was good. Uh, but Chile needs to get some ice. They need to get air conditioned and they need to learn that drinks don't have to be cold when in the refrigerator. Yeah. 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 I, I couldn't believe like it was hot. So what's, what Lewis told me is that because of the environment change and people aren't used to the hot weather, like it used to get hot, but not that hot. So nobody has air conditions in their house or nobody's really prepared for the hot weather like that. So, yeah, it was crazy. But I enjoyed it. Uh, we all came home. We was all tired. And I think what people don't understand is they, a lot of people ask me, why didn't we record while we was out there? Dude, we was up from, from the time we got up. And we got home. I don't think we got home into bed before 12 March nights. Yeah. You it was know, crazy. After dinner and um, everything. We just got home. You're knackered and you got to do it all over again. And even on our days off, it was busy. One day off, and we was busy, and then we was traveling. It, it was hectic, man. It was hectic. You know, when, when these rock bands go on tour and they're doing all these different gigs every night, I can understand why they get tired. What, like, and how you that know can what? worry you out. What up? I understand why they do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I don't, I they got to keep gonna going. I guess they just, yeah. they just keep the party going. Like, it doesn't yeah, stop. Exactly. Speed. Oh. Uh, like Green I Day think back it was in the nineties when they were really good. They were on speed. Yeah, I think. Uh, I, I think we did a good thing. It was fun. Also, thank you to everybody in Chile that helped us out as well and made it possible. 
I really want to see the RC community striving again. It's like regenerating. I hope it gets going and they get with such great facilities. They should have the, the biggest and the, the, the economic situation in Chile is pretty good too. So they should, I would hope to see them have the most races at some point. Uh, anything you guys want to say prior to we end up on the Latin America tour, Robert, I can see you're ready to check out. Is it 10 o'clock there in Spain yet? <laughs> no, but I will go to have a world with my dogs and so on right now, I guess. All right. Well, give us your last finishing touches and then JQ and I will finish it up. And I think just, I would like to thank all guys uh, over there, like in Peru, uh, Brazil and Chile. Uh, they were uh, really good with us. Hospitality has been awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, they all were great in the clinics, even if they take all, all cones out and so on. But even those, they were Super nice guys. We enjoyed a lot. We made uh, new guys, new further friends, I guess. And yeah, also I think the invisible speed thing, uh, it has to move on. And it should go uh, more about the countries, even on Europe and USA. I think most I of agree. us will enjoy so much. We humans will know, will humans, they really think that they know a lot, but mm -hmm. they know maybe 70% of the RC right now on our topic. So yeah, I think it will help to many people. Uh, I have many people in Spain asking to, to do that here. So I think we will go ahead here for sure. But I think we have to go ahead on this, go ahead on the course and mm -hmm. books and everything. So all this knowledge uh, has to have to be here and I have to help people to get more people involved on RC. And I think all of this will be better for all of us, not only Mayako, it will be mm -hmm. better for all for RC runs. I, I think, um, I think this is a good test. I, I think that these clinics need to be less people, 15 at the most. I think 20 is the most you can have. And I think they have to be three days if you're going to have a race. So it has to be no, two days. Well, yeah, if you're going to, the clinic can be two days, but I'm talking about the race. So the race will be the third day. But I think yeah. I think we have to do uh, less people, more focus. One day in class, second day at the track. And you can get much more done, less people. It's going to have to be less people. You're going to have to charge more because it has to. you have to cover this. You know, if these clinics have to pay for themselves. But that, that way you can give more attention, I think. And uh, less people, charge more, give more attention. Uh, I think if we do another one next year, I think we should go Mexico, Costa Rica, because they're racing again, and Puerto Rico. Those three countries. We do like a, Carib a Central America, Caribbean type Latin America tour. And then right. I, I would like to go Colombia too. And Bolivia we, and Argentina. Shit. Yeah, shit. You want to go everywhere. Okay. So before Robert goes, uh, people always complain that I never give any compliments. Uh, so I'm going to give, give my annual compliment? compliment now. What? <laughs> I did? Yes, you said, oh, lefty, you I now? love you and I need you in my life. Twice. I didn't say the last <laughs> part. I did say I love you. I remember that. No, you, you didn't. Better... Yeah, I did. Stop inventing. He did say that. No, I did say that. Yeah. No, Alex no, no. is my proof. I have it on video. You do? Okay. Yes. Well, anyway, so I'm actually pretty uh, positive now. I mean... I, I should say <laughs> I, I was kind of positive before also, but more so now about Mayako and uh, Invisible Speed, because like I said, Robert was a person who was needed to fill a void in Mayako to make it work. And I think actually that after these three weeks, uh, I can see that Robert exceeded my expectations of of uh, who he is and as a person. Um, and his ability to fill that role. So self-starter shows initiative, fucks me off when needed, not <laughs> shy to be direct. You know, it, it's really good. So for anyone like on the, anyone who's skepti skeptical about Mayako and, and the whole project of building a community, not sponsoring everyone, doing things differently, and, uh, and thinking that, oh, will this work? Won't it work? They haven't fulfilled that promise yet. Well, just watch, you know. Now we strengthened our team with one uh, very good 
person for this role. Robert, that's you. So, Thank you, man. Yeah, there, there's my annual compliment. Lefty is in <laughs> shock. And no, I'm about let's to do bring one on of our favorite. Favorite. I, I, I had a blast, man. Thank you, Robert, for being cool. It was fun. I know I piss people off. Like when I don't, I go to the Komodo and only bring back beer and no cold water for you. <laughs> That's uh, true. <laughs> he's like, what? What, Lefty? You didn't bring me any water? I'm like, here's a cold beer. I don't want beer. I want water. Cold water. But uh, I, this is my favorite Robert uh, thing. So we're drinking coffee. Yeah, it has been good. That's good, man. No, no. Oh, I took a nice coffee today. Oh, oh yeah. God. After Peru, the coffee was not that good. Yeah, um, sure not. This is Robert at coffee one day at, at, at that cafe. What was it again? Surely I don't I believe do you. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe, believe you. you. No, no. And he made it. <laughs> I don't believe you. I don't believe you. It was so many good things. And then, like, when he makes a mistake, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, oh, it was so funny. There were so many different things that we found out about each other. Um, but it was fun. I think what we done was great for the community that's on there. We still have, I have some walkabout videos. You still have some videos to do. And I hope they had fun. And I and we made new friends too. That's what I liked. And um, yeah, we and it was just great because people were so eager to show us their culture. And I like that. And yeah. um, I appreciate them taking their time to come out. And show us around and be and make new friends because that's what RC is about too, making friends. And I have to agree, uh, you you are very good hard worker. Like after watching you this last week, I know you're perfect for this role. And I know you want to chill out this weekend, so you know what? I'm gonna let you go. And <laughs> El Hefi, Pitbull, Bob, Robert, yeah. <laughs> you got perfect, like three weekends. And um, go back to go and yeah. sleep and have perfect. fun this weekend. Well, I have a small meeting now, and then I will go. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Robert. Robert. By the way, Robert told me something on the trip uh, because I I asked, like, so what about uh, your girlfriend? Uh, Was she worried about you joining my my (laughs) uncle? And then, uh, because basically, like, Robert is trusting me to a great degree, right? Putting his life in my hands. Like, what if I, you know, fail somehow with this? Like, my role in. My echo to launch it has been very big, you know, right? So then he said that uh, actually, didn't you say that she asked like, "Who's who's the guy who's uh, you're the, you're working with now?" And yeah. then you were like, "Yeah, it was the green head guy with the speaker at the world." With it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then she was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, so any, she was anyway, not really comfortable at all. Yeah, so I hope the fact that you were returned from this trip safe and sound alive uh, helped to calm her down a bit and helped to make her believe that this is a real thing and it will work out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she's watching also so much about it since we're having a lot of meetings and people around and just asking and she see, she, she sees also that about all sales and all people just taking care about Mayako and so on. So, yeah, I think, as I told before, like, it will be not, like, instantly changing, but for sure, uh, in a short term, we'll have a, a good future, and I think people will enjoy so much the new RC that we all will do on the next uh, seasons. I mean, not only Mayako, I think the other brands will change also, and we all will have benefits on that, so... I think it's a good starting point on on something really great for the RC. And to be honest, Joseph, deep inside, it's super good guy. <laughs> deep, very deep inside. <laughs> but very deep inside, but <laughs> but he is. <laughs> oh, thanks. Where did uh, I think Lefty left us? Yeah, good. We can just end it then. <laughs> it's our anyway. podcast now. Yeah. I think we can end the podcast. Yeah. Lefty okay, dropped. Guys. His internet must have dropped. Okay. Well, anyway, thanks a yeah. lot. And uh, Lefty can edit this together. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay, you. Man. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Man. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys. That ends our podcast for this week. I know it was probably a little long. 
I know my first part was long, but I had a lot of catching up to do. Uh, been away from the microphone for a month, so it's lots to talk about in those times. Uh, thank you to JQ and Robert for coming on for their time. Really had a lot of fun with them in Latin America. Thank you to everybody that helped us out in Latin America. Sergio, Vanina, uh, Fernando, Marcos in Peru. Uh, Extreme Hobbies in Peru as well. Thank you to everybody in Brazil that helped us out. Uh, Dr. J, Juliano, Fernando, Duars, uh, Henry Winnick, Davey, Eduardo Rossi. Thank you for all your help. And uh, Josiel as well for the awesome tour. And he took us on on the Tuesday. Thank you to everybody in Chile that helped us out. Luis from RC Adventure. Thank you to the RC Adventure people for allowing us there and letting us have fun on the crawler course as well. Thank you to uh, Gaston and the guys at Cash for all their support and coming out and doing the race. We had a lot of fun there. And uh, it was fun seeing all those jets. And what a beautiful facility you have. And I hope um, you get the racing gets up and going where you guys can have more people racing there as well and off it. And uh, we just had a lot, a lot of fun. Thank you to everybody that followed the tour. Thank you to everybody that attended the clinics. We greatly appreciate it. And the new friends that we made as well. Uh, it was a blast. 2023 is going to be awesome. Uh, Mayako is looking great. Invisible Speed's looking great. Robert's looking great, like as a racer. And uh, JQ seems to be happy. So that's good. Uh, hopefully the podcast can continue to grow. And uh, we can still do cool things. And we get to travel a little bit. Not as much as this year, but uh, yeah, it's been awesome. I've been blessed. It's been probably a very fortunate year for me after two years of kind of staying home for COVID. We hit it hard this year. I had fun. I'm tired, but uh, that's just part of it. And uh, thank you to everybody that supports myself and the NNRC. <clears throat> I truly can't do it without you guys. Uh, really, I can't. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I greatly appreciate it. Also, I want to say thank you to the NNRC patrons. patrons of the NNRC and the YouTube membership. Uh, greatly appreciate your support. You will have a private uh, patron <clears throat> Christmas show as well. Uh, you did get a Patreon pod, but the audio was jacked. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, also, shout out to the NNRC squad around the world. Without you guys, we can't do it. Help us with growing our YouTube channel. Let's hit that 4,000K, sorry, 4K mark. It'd be nice to hit it before I go to DNC. One three thousand four hundred, so six hundred more subs. I just need to. I need to grow that channel. And uh, remember, also you can become a YouTube member for dollar ninety nine. If you like what I'm doing, that helps a lot. And uh, thank you to these awesome companies that uh, support the podcast. And thank you to the companies that are going to come on next year. Uh, I hope we get some a few more. And uh, this podcast can, you know, do. Big things if we get the funds in to do it. They are Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, TNR Fuels, Mayako, RCGP, Beach RC, Techno RC, Sun Pedal Racing Batteries, TZO 200 Tires, Lugs Racing Tires, G Spec RC Tuning, Clinic RC, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic, Racecraft USA. Shout out to the NNRC drivers, David the Viking Rhino Falk, Robert Bob Badier, Jared Teeves Tebo, and the Doctor. Alexander Hagberg. Shout out to everybody that supports us. We'll see you next week on the live show. And uh, thank you to our new friends in South America. With that said, Nitro is the glory. E buggy pays the bills. Lefty is out. When I find the outro. <laughs>